This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Former Prime Minister Menez says tax collectors wreaking havoc. He's blasting hostile actions by the government to collect taxes. Prime Minister waving off questions on the London trip accounting and the government upping its share in underwater treasure. Plus, in our discussion today, we are talking about tipping standards. How much should you tip when you are receiving services, and customer service. We're talking about that as well. It's all straight ahead this morning. I'm Dwight Strawn, and this is Morning Blend. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. It's the start of the start of the new way. You know that yeah. It's the start of the end of the old way Good morning again, Bahamas. It is Thursday, May 18th, 2023. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Again, I'm Dwight Strawn. In a moment, Laverne Gardner will be joining us. Also this morning, it is Family Medicine Awareness Month. We're going to be talking about family medicine. That's all straight ahead, but first, it's time for the overnight, the latest breaking news from while you were sleeping, and the top national and international headlines this morning. In the overnight, former Prime Minister Dr. Ruminis claiming in the House Assembly that tax collectors are wreaking havoc in the Bahamas and that Bahamians are suffering under a government, quote, obsessed with getting the people's money. Ruminis said this is all taking place as Prime Minister Philip Davis, Minister of Finance, flies around the world in luxury. Ruminis saying, quote, these hostile and overly aggressive actions by the New Day tax collectors are cruel and excessive. The PLP is hurting Bahamian businesses and business people through its heartless tax collection crusade. Well, the Department of Inland Revenue in recent months has become increasingly aggressive as and has warned delinquent taxpayers that they face action. Last week, the National Guardian reported that the DIR has started garnishing the bank accounts of businesses that are severely in arrears and have not made arrangements to cor- correct their debt to the government. But Minnis says the PLP and the Minister of Finance are, quote, going after the very people who voted for them. All reasonable people think taxes should be paid, but tax collection should be done with fancy. (laughs) 
In other news, the Antiquities, Monuments, and Museum Amendment Bill 2023, which will allow the government to receive a 50% share of artifacts recovered from Bahamian waters, has been passed in the House. It was passed yesterday and received bipartisan support. Prime Minister Philip Davis, who led the debate on the bill, said it is necessary to protect our patrimony. The bill will regulate and update the law relating to the recovery of underwater cultural heritage in the country. Days after, opposition leader Michael Pintard said the Davis administration must give a full accounting for the recent trip to London by a delegation to attend the coronation of King Charles III. Prime Minister Davis telling reporters he was not aware of any criticisms related to the trip. Asked about the cost and about criticism some have, some have had regarding the size of the delegation, Davis said, quote, I have not seen any criticisms, nor have I heard any questions about the delegation. Pintard, who along with his wife, traveled to London to the coronation of on said last week that they quote must maintain now that the government is duty bound to provide a full accounting as we've been asking them for every trip including the one that the leader of the opposition went on no government official has formally responded to his statement governor general sir ca smith and his wife clara prime minister davis and his wife Anne marie minister of foreign affairs fred mitchell and former governor general dame margaret pindling were among the bahamian delegation in london State Minister for Legal Affairs Jomo Campbell says he's concerned that the opening of the Nassau cruise port could lead to a slow and painful death for some tourists in downtown Nassau. He was speaking in the House yesterday. That cruise port, built at a cost of $300 million, will open next week. Campbell saying that um, he's fully aware that there's a need to provide a welcoming environment for visitors to the country. Well, quote, we must do everything we can to ensure that this does not result in the painful death of attractions downtown. He's, uh, he pointed to many of his constituents who work in the straw market who are concerned for their livelihood. And FNM leader Michael Pintard says he fully expects former DNA leader Renthia Komalafe to join the FNM. Komalafe attended an FNM joint meeting for constituencies in eastern New Providence on Monday night and was photographed with Pintard. Speaking with reporters yesterday, Pintard says, quote, There were other persons who contested other organizations who expressed interest in joining the party. As well as contesting the next year election, Mrs. Komalafe herself can speak to the media concerning whether or not she's running or not. To this point, she's just indicated a willingness to work with us. And in a dramatic turn of events, Roscoe Thompson, who was accused of conspiring to smuggle drugs, has been released from prison after the U.S. government reportedly withdrew a request for him to the Court of Appeal, upheld an order for Thompson's extradition on March 29th following a nine-year-long legal battle. But less than two months later, Thompson was a free man after federal prosecutors decided not to proceed again with the case. Thompson, who's now 63, was arrested on a provisional warrant in 2014 in relation to a 2007 indictment that alleged he conspired with others to smuggle cocaine from Colombia to the U.S. using the Bahamas as a transshipment point. The alleged conspiracy took place between 1998 and 2004, Prosecutors alleged that Thompson's role was to receive shipments shipments of cocaine from the north coast of Colombia. The methods of shipment were used were fishing vessels, speedboats, airplanes. Prosecutors alleged that Thompson's associates received shipments of cocaine in the waters off the coast of the Bahamas and that he arranged for their delivery to other associates who would import or distribute them into the United States. Overseas world leaders landing today for a group of seven meeting in Hiroshima in Japan, the site of the world's first atomic bomb attack, with Russia's war in Ukraine expected to be high on the agenda. Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida kicked off his summit diplomacy with, by, by meeting with U.S. President Joe Biden after his arrival at a nearby military base. He was due to hold talks with British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak a bit later today. Before the three-day gathering of leaders of the world's wealthy democracies opens Friday, the Japan-U.S. alliance is the very foundation of peace and security in the Indo-Pacific region, according to Kishida. The U.S. president ex exited Air Force One and briefly greeted troops at nearby Marine Corps Air Station Iwakuni. 
As G7 attendees making, make their way to Hiroshima, Moscow unleashed a yet another aerial attack on the Ukrainian capital. Loud explosions thundered through Kyiv during the early hours of the day, marking the ninth time this month that Russian air raids in weeks of relative quiet. In sports, for the first time in its history, the Bahamas Football Association has a woman as its president, winning 5-4 to four in the presidential vote. Anya James securing a victory in the BFA's annual general meeting and election of officers. That was Tuesday night at Breeze's Resort on Cable Beach. James, who served as vice president with the previous administration, got the victory over Sam Tebow, who was running for the top spot. She replaces Aton Seeley, who did not run Seeley has been at the helm since 1996. James will serve for the next four years. Read more about it in today's Guardian Sports section. Bahamian professional baseball player Jazzrato Jazz Chisholm Jr. back on the injured list, suffering a right turf toe injury with the Miami Marlins 6-5 loss to the Cincinnati Reds on Saturday. We told you about this yesterday. He's expected to be out now for the next four to six weeks. The club making the announcement late Tuesday, and an initial move was placed. He was placed on the club's 10-day injured list, retroactive to Sunday. After missing more than half of the season a year ago with a stress fracture in his lower back, Chisholm will go to the injured list again for the first time this season. He had a modest start to the season, but was starting to come around as the primary center fielder for the Marlins and also at the plate. Things looking better for another Miami team, the Miami Heat, winning their the first game of the Eastern Conference Championships for the NBA. Off to sluggish start yesterday against the Boston Celtics, but Jimmy Butler providing a calming presence and a whole lot more. He scored 35 points, including 20 after halftime, and the Heat rallied in the second half to beat the Celtics 123 to 116. Again, that was Game One of the Eastern Conference Finals Wednesday night. He said his teammates have given him confidence. They beat the Celtics right there in Boston. Bam Adebayo added 20 points and 8 rebounds. Kyle Lowry, Caleb Martin, Gabe Vincent, and Max Struss all added 15 points apiece. The Heat went 16 of 31 from the three-point line. The number 8 seed Heat have opened all three playoff series with road victories. Game two is Friday in Boston. That's sports, and that's the overnight. Time for your first look at weather. In your first look at weather for today, we've got a weak pressure pattern that continues to support light to gentle breezes across the islands while streaming moisture will enhance shower activity. There remains a possibility of funnel cloud or water spout activity for all areas and residents are reminded to remain hydrated and limit outdoor activities during peak sun hours due to high heat index factors. For all areas today, forecast calls for partly sunny and warm conditions with a few isolated showers and thunderstorms becoming variably cloudy and warm with isolated showers and thunderstorms tonight. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds southerly at 10 knots or less in the northwest and central Bahamas, east to southeast at 10 knots or less in the southeast Bahamas, seas 3 feet or less. Temperatures getting up to around 86 Fahrenheit, 30 Celsius, but it will feel a lot hotter than that. Overnight lows tonight getting down about 73 Fahrenheit, 23 Celsius. That's your first look at weather this morning. We'll have extended outlook coming up after traffic in just a bit. (music) 
It's time for a break, but when we come back, we're discussing the day's top stories right here on Morning Blend on Guardian Home for fresh news and smart talk all day. Tired of banks forcing you to use technology to bank the way they want you to? Your convenience is important. So no matter what your banking needs, Commonwealth Bank's friendly staff are always available in branch for that personal one-on-one service. But when you choose technology, our online and mobile banking app offers you state-of-the-art functionality. The choice is yours. Commonwealth Bank. Bank the way you want. At Wendy's, we are different. We don't just use beef. It's fresh, never frozen. Our burgers are square because we never cut corners. Served hot off the grill with fresh lettuce, tomatoes, onions, and American cheese. We believe in fast food done right. Always serving fresh, never frozen beef. Order a hot, juicy Dave single, double or triple. Made with fresh, never frozen beef. Now only at Wendy's. Different inside and out. Shopping is so rewarding with my Fidelity credit card. I get the best prices with price protection. Earn and redeem freedom points at my favorite stores. Get cash back. Plus, I booked a cruise. Get your Fidelity credit card today. Call 356 7764. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Wake up, wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. It's the start of the start of the new way. You know that. Yeah. It's the start up. of the end of the old way Wake up, it's a new day It's a new day Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We're streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at MorningBlend969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 42247. Nine six. Remember, standard text rates apply. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn. Joining me now, Laverne Gardner. Laverne, good morning. Good morning. Good great, morning. Great to have you with us as always. Yes, yeah, great to be here. I have a lot to get to this morning. Uh, coming up, we're going to be talking about uh, tipping, tipping uh, standards. How much should you be tipping? Should you be tipping? Do you have to tip? Um, especially with gratuity already factored in, especially at restaurants and some other places as well. We'll get to that and um, and how this impacts service and whether that should be a reward for service and service in general in the country, whether things are getting any better or worse in the, since the pandemic. Things seem to be a little shaky in some regards. We'll get into all of that. Uh, and Dr. Day. Or is it tomorrow? Tomorrow is World Family Doctor Day, May 19th. Today is the 18th. Oh, boy, I'm a little off. But did you know that? Did not. First time I ever heard of that. There you go. There you go. That's that's on the 19th, and we're going to be talking about family medicine today. Um, And um, having a family doctor, the importance of that. That's coming up. But let's begin with what else is in the news.
And in the news, uh, there's a whole lot I want to talk about. Uh, and um, if we start on one, we're going to be there forever. I don't know where to begin. I really don't know where to begin. Really quickly, let's get through this. Um, so Michael Pintard says he expects former DNA leader Arinthia Komalafe to join the FNM um, and make that official soon. Um, there's lots of speculation uh, earlier in the week, over the weekend, after she was at an event an FNM event, so he, he's saying that she wants to help them, wants to work with them, whether she will run that, um, yeah, we, don't, we don't know, we don't know yet. Um, he says, ask her if she intends to. Hmm. Interesting. All right, and then we have a former FNM leader, Mike, uh, Dr. Ibrahim Minnis, saying that tax collectors are wreaking havoc, blasting, the Prime Minister, who's Minister of Finance, for the hostile actions by government to collect taxes. Speaking about how aggressive the Department of Inland Revenue has been in going after people in arrears on their real property tax or business licenses and, uh, and, uh, and such. Let's get your reaction to that. Um, uh, what, do you, what do you think of People have been saying that for many years, that um, there are people who aren't paying and people should go after them. Minnis is suggesting that it's, um, it's, let's read the quote directly, what he's saying here. He says, quote, the PLP is hurting Bahamian businesses and business people through its heartless tax collection crusade. The PLP and the Minister of Finance are going after the very people who voted for them all reasonable people think taxes should be paid, but tax collection should be done with fairness, due process, and decency. And when the money is collected, it should be used for the benefit of the people. The New Day administration is obsessed with getting all the money they could get. They have to find a way to pay for all the travel and good times reserved for select PLPs. They have to find money to pay for all the PLP consultants. Mm. Sadly, this administration has unleashed the tax collectors in an unprecedented way against Bahamians. Many people and businesses are just trying to get back on track after the difficulties of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Right after the moment the money starts to come in, the New Day tax collectors are threatening to seize and sell properties and to garnish accounts. There is no mercy for the people by this Minister of Finance. This Minister of Finance only wants more and more. Hmm. Okay. Um, so, as you recall, this was a hot topic last week. The DIR created a stir and some sort of ad last week warning people that delinquent, uh, people were delinquent and paying their real property taxes so that the government could sell those properties. But that was later cleared up. Uh, cleared up. Uh, PLP Chairman Fred Mitchell said the ad was misinterpreted. Eh. Poorly written, he also said. Um, he didn't say that in those words, but that's what he was suggesting, and that it only related to non-Bahamian landowners and entities that have tied up lands from development but owe substantial taxes. Menes is suggesting, though, that the Davis administration is using the full power of the state to go after Bahamians and Bahamian businesses. All right, so let's get your reaction to this. Um, Interesting comments coming from the former prime minister. As always, these days, everything is quite interesting that he says. Um, is he just, um, is he accurate? Are, should there be, because some of these businesses haven't been doing what they're supposed to be doing. Really, we know this. We know this. Um, just, um, something that is, you know, convenient, a convenient low hanging fruit that, yeah, they'll like that because everyone's getting a lot of notices from DI, so they're going to feel this way too, even though it's probably not accurate to say that they are being aggressive with everybody. Um, but let's say, let's hear from you. Maybe you have, you have a different experience. Give us a call. 323 6232 325 4316. Three two five four two five nine. Call us toll free two four two three hundred five seven two zero, or tweet us at Morning Blend nine six nine, Facebook, or text us four two seven nine six. Let's hear from you. What do you, what do you think about this, Laverne? What do you what, what's your view on that?
And certainly from the outside, I'm not a business owner. Well, <clears throat> technically, but anyway, I don't fall into that category, mm -hmm. right? And so from the outside, it certainly does feel as if being squeezed, right? But I don't know all of the ins and outs. I'm just saying perception. And it feels that way. That may not be the reality. According to the report, they are going after those um, business owners who are delinquent but have not made any payment arrangements. Right. So it would appear as if, hey, we are willing to put you on a payment plan or come sit down and talk with us about, you know, how you can make your bill bring your bill down but some business owners are not to take advantage of this or chosen not to do it and these are the people that they're going after mm -hmm. you know so can we really be upset if they're saying come in and make payment arrangements you don't come in and make payment do not respond and now they're at this point you know what I mean yeah. But I'm just saying, though, at face value, when you when I when I first heard it, read it, I was like, "What are you trying to 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 do what to people?" But like I said, we don't know the entire ins and outs. Yeah. And if you if you're in the, in that category, then you know, let us know maybe why you haven't gone in to make arrangements, or let us know exactly what the process is, how it works. You know, yeah. Let us know the full story. That's my thing. Yeah. Um, no, this is this is. Um, I have so many views on this. They are being aggressive, but they okay. we've been we've been asking for them to be aggressive, right? There are tons of people who are not paying their fair share. They're doing what right. they're supposed to do, and now it's it's unfortunate that some of the language has been misconstrued all those misses, right? Um, there's, been, there's been a lot of that because of some poorly written statements and that has caused some confusion. Um, right. and they've tried to backtrack and released um, updates and up, readjusted the language. But, you know, sometimes the damage is done and uh, people are thinking all these things. That was very, uh, right. was Who very scary last, last week. things before they go out? Right? Um, that was scary last week. After seven months, so they'd begin to try to take your stuff. I mean, that, that created... Everyone. And and it, it, even with that, nowhere in that um, statement. So you know, for the um, excuse me, for for Mr. Mitchell to say you know it's being misinterpreted, um, not really. When you leave out a whole chunk of it, if I say to you, Dwight, um, all I say to you, all our reporters have to pay a fine. And then all reporters get up in arms and then they come back and say, well, no, that's misinterpreted because I wasn't referring to the Guardian. No, well, it's not misinterpreted. I left out a key piece of information. Yeah. So I think that a key piece of information didn't apply to Bahamian land owners. It should have said that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, now, again, this is politics. I believe this is uh, this is just me saying this, but this is Dr. Minnis finding this is an, uh, a, a place for him to get some points. Somehow people read that and say, yeah, he's right. But um, hmm. of course, huh? yeah, okay. I'm not trying to minimize what's going on in, um, you know, the business community and business owners and excuse me, what they may be facing and they have to deal with. It seems as if the DRA is kind of extending an olive. I say, I say DRA. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> the DRA. That's that's a whole other body. Mm -hmm. But it, it um, you know, inland revenue appears to have extended an olive branch. Now, again, we don't know really what that looks like when someone goes there who's been delinquent or, you know, what they expect them to pay. Because if you have been delinquent and you go in there and they're like, okay, um, we can put you on a payment plan, you have to, once you come up with 75%. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So, so are, or how they work with people. Mm -hmm. But for sure, 
you know he's doing that to do exactly what we're doing this morning. Sure. Grab headlines and remain relevant, for sure. Now, now he is right about that there's a lot yeah. of traveling. There's a lot of traveling. There are a lot of consultants. There are a lot of new staff members who need to be paid. And so the, that is that is true. They hired everybody but you and me. Um, I don't but, know. Uh, and I, and hmm? I'm thinking they didn't hire me because I'm associated with you. Probably. Probably. I mean, I think it'll work out for you in better in the end um for that but um but yeah so i mean that part mm, well that's another story but anyway let's get your reaction with three two three six two three two three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine call us toll free two four two three hundred five seven two zero or text us, 422-4796. All right, let's get these text messages in. This person says here, the Prime Minister's digging for money in my bag, but he on my dime can go to London to adore people who don't give a crap about us. Now he doesn't want to say how much the trip costs. Did he use his own money? I have a problem with it, sir. You need to account. Okay, I, I hear you. Yeah. Hmm. Um, well, you know, he went to see our king, <clears throat> Yeah. On um, this one says it's good to see the government going after the taxes due, but on the other on the other hand, it truly um, seems as if they are getting it to give contracts to their cronies who are constantly fighting on social media on who got what or which MP is taking more than they should. Well, okay. Um, should the government not use all the tools at its disposal to go after tax cheats? Successive governments have allowed outstanding taxes to balloon to almost half a billion while we borrow and spend what we don't have. Collect all taxes at all costs. If you collect, char- if you collect charge and collect that from me and you keep, then keep the, uh, and you then keep the money, throw the book at them. Yeah, they're having lots of issues. People aren't handing over the VAT, um, right? Lots and lots of challenges. And so why n- I don't understand why this is a problem. If you owe them the money, pay them the money. And if you if you don't pay them, you've got to be aggressive. You have to. I mean, I don't understand what um, entirely what um, Dr. Minnis is saying or doing here. Hmm. But anyway, um, I was informed that the banks are also adding property tax onto mortgage loans as well. That I'm sure that's not correct. Um, but if you aren't paid up, it'll be a problem for you when you try to wrap up that mortgage. All right? Um, but that's why you've got an appraisal. There's a lot. It's, it's not as simple as a sentence, but. Um, it is factored in in terms of make you pay that off before you can complete the mortgage. Um, all right, this person says here, people need to pay their taxes. That is the full story. Minutes is playing politics. Simple. Leave out Mitchell. People owe their taxes. Pay it. No excuses. Leave out Mitchell. Okay. I don't know what you mean. but um, uh, Maybe, uh, yeah, maybe they would. Because we were just making reference to. This, well, I mean, the, thank goodness um, he did yes. that because nobody else had done it, had said anything, and people were like right. all freaking out. Um, so everybody thought it applied across the board yeah. until he actually said something. So. Right. Um, Minis probably owes taxes, but he is right about Dave. Davis's New Day crew, and yes, they are going to sell our properties. Mitchell's trying to mislead exactly what Davis's government means. Eh. While collecting taxes, they need to tear down those shanty towns throughout the country. A lot of unpaid taxes are slipping by in them. Maybe they rent like everyone else. Um, And Dwight, the PLP, will soon send you a contract. Ask Clint how sweet it is. Now you all need to stop. Um, (laughs) All righty then. Okay. Um, yeah, they need to tear down the shanty towns and tear down those uh, derelict buildings on Bay Street as well. Yes, lots and lots and lots of taxes, I'm sure, could be made from them. I'm sure they're not paying. I'd be shocked if they are. Um, this one says they need to take these tour cars off the road. Where was this coming from? Uh, they're menace to other vehicles on the road. I'm in a line of slow-moving traffic, and they come driving into oncoming traffic to overtake us. A scooter, then a high-powered off-road golf cart, and a four-wheeler, all swerving in and out of traffic. Oh, those are what you're calling tour cars? Scooters, high-powered golf carts, and four-wheelers. Mm. Yeah, okay. Hmm. 
Um, oh my lord, what is this? <laughs> Please, everybody stop. Stop now. Dwight, the reason why they didn't hire you is because you were too even-handed. That's not good for political parties. Change your balanced ways and you will be hired. Right, right. Well then. Uh, well, I, I kind of figured that one out. Um, Dwight, you've seen this video on Facebook with these LPs fighting about who had... <laughs> I'm editing. Who had who got a contract and who didn't? Oh man, they said some other things. I'm not going to say that. Okay. No, I don't. I don't. I don't go on Facebook like that. I'll leave that to other people. Um, yes, the bank is adding your insurance and a property tax annual to the loan balance. It's true. Well, that's if you. Well, insurance, of course. Um, I mean, it has to be factored in. But no, if you don't pay it, it's going to be a problem for you. In the end. Um, okay. Anyway, we'll get some clarity on that. Um, but you have to pay it, so... Yeah. The, the, the banks I are helping was, them with that. Um, you know, at the end... I think on I think on Z Live, that came up as a discussion. And yeah, you do have to... Like, let's say if you're wrapping up your mortgage, um, that is a part of it. Of wrapping it up, making sure that you've uh, met, uh, paid your real property tax. Mm. Oh, okay. All right. So it's a bit more coming yeah. in. They're saying some banks have taken over remitting RPT for people with mortgages. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, well, then that's a, yeah, not every. Well, yeah, if you aren't paying it, I guess they're going to do it. Um, yeah. Right. If you... We got a letter, um, you know, basically saying the same thing to us. And, um, our real property tax. And then, of course, we had to let them know that we are in Grand Bahama and Freeport Lucayo. We do not pay that. <laughs> but they did say, the you know, you could make arrangements with the banking facility if they and they'll go ahead and pay it for you. And, of course, add it to the mortgage and it'll extend the life of the mortgage. Really? So that is the thing. Well, there you go. Okay. Um... Well, what you're going to do is, right, um, what, is it, is it a bad thing? Is it a, if you weren't paying it on your own, what, 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 what get a smaller house so you don't quality, so your, hack, your house isn't falling into that tax bracket, no, if you're so angry about it, or get, um, <laughs> Some of your MPs to to say that we need to eliminate real property tax. Oh, you're not going to do that. So what are we going to do? Pay the tax? No. This need to see the royals in their country, um, but um, we also had to pay for them when they came here. Hmm. Yeah. Well, that's your king. That's what you do when there's a king, huh? <laughs> I just wish you could hear yourself when you say that. <laughs> I mean, it's the king. king. It's the king. It's the king yeah, of the Bahamas. It's, the tone. Well, it's your tone. I don't know what y'all expect. So much. I don't know what y'all expect. He's the king. Put some respect on his name. Um, right? It's what you're conveying. It's like, it's you know, that's speak, your king. <laughs> speaking the truth. What would you expect to do? You expect the king to be for you? <sighs> the king of the Bahamas. <clears throat> Yeah. Um, Dwight Laverne, tithes, taxes, and debts must be serviced before personal spending, but too much waste occurs in government spending. A small example is them announcing yesterday that they are hiring full-time, high-paid archaeologists to investigate the findings of sea explorers and salvagers. It would have been less costly to hire the services of a foreign archaeology company only when required. We do not need to increase the size of public service. Well, it might be more common than you think. Maybe... Right? Maybe it's a regular thing. Um, Maybe. I don't know. Uh, my pressure <laughs> rising, blood pressure, I think we're talking about. Um, but both parties hunt down money, then play the donkey when we want to know how our money is being wasted. Sick of both of them. In the U.S., they collect, but they have good roads. So please come when you call. Mm -hmm. The courts work. You can get justice, and you don't have to beg the president to get your business project approved. Yeah, he definitely wouldn't be involved in that. Um, boy, um, another one here, aggressive collection of taxes should not be frowned upon. We are just hopeful that there is not selectivity in the process. 
Furthermore, we would expect that since the government is being assertive with the collection of taxes, its culture to pay vendors timely changes. Oh, boy. Presently, payment to vendors averages net 180 days. This is detrimental to commerce. Be fair-handed across the board. Excellent text. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely agree with you on that one. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, this is something we have to do, folks. So I'm not sure. Uh, again, I, we, uh, like the text says, we hope they're being fair. They're going after the people at the top who we know are definitely... Definitely some of the major violators. Hopefully that is what's going on. Otherwise, right. we don't really understand um, what um, what Dr. Minnis is really running on about here. Um, um, again, all the consultants, and all, all the people getting hired to do duplicate, duplicate work. Um, mm-hmm. um, triplicate, often. Um, but um, it's something that has to happen. It's something that has to happen. All right. Um, want to talk about something else that is, um, is it irritating me? I, I don't know what word to use. But this, this, is, this is getting out of, out of control now. This is getting out of control because I, maybe there is a different downtown Nassau than the one that others are referring to. And I haven't visited that place ever, apparently. But a lot of people are very concerned about downtown Nassau and what the cruise port and other developments proposed, what impact they're going to have on downtown Nassau. Huh? Anyway, now we've got um, uh, the State Minister for Legal Affairs, General Campbell. He said in the House of Assembly that he's concerned that the opening of the Nassau cruise port could lead to a, quote, slow and painful death for some tourist attractions in downtown Nassau. First of all, tourist, a what? Attractions? Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the Nassau Cruise Port, built at a cost of $300 million, will open next week. Now, Campbell said, um, I fully understand the need environment for visitors to our country. As world's second most popular cruise destination, Nassau, is it? Nassau must have a terminal that complements our tourism product. However, I'm concerned that certain tourist attractions in the downtown area will receive less visitor traffic as a result, and as a result can die a slow and painful death. We must do everything we can to ensure that this does not happen. For example, as pointed out to me by many of my constituents who work in the straw market, straw vendors have been selling products in Rawson Square since the 1950s, the straw market and several straw market vendors have played significant roles in our nation's history. While we can all agree that there are perhaps some improvements needed to the straw market, hmm. I truly hope that the straw vendors see an increase in business and not a decline. Campbell said he hopes the new port will galvanize many of the owners of buildings in the downtown area to renovate and clean up their premises. He said, far too many of the buildings in the downtown area have been abandoned, neglected, and are in a state of terrible decay. To the visitor exiting the Nassau cruise port, the sight of these dilapidated structures could not be attractive, <laughs> to say the least. I mean, by goodness. Okay. Um, quote, as, I said, as I've said before, developments that involve historical sites and are of great national value, such as the Nassau cruise port, must complement national growth stakeholders, and most especially the Bahamian people. I must also ask at this juncture, when will the cruise port fulfill its obligations to invest $8 million towards the beautification of downtown? It is essential. They did that? Oh, God. Why, why, well, why, apparently why, they why, did. Why did they? That, well, that was some nugget to entice. Oh, boy, that's unfortunate. Whoa. Okay. To, for it to be urinated on within a week? I, I, okay. Anyway, um, the cruise port project started in October, yeah, 20, October 2019, continued to pace throughout the COVID pandemic and progressed further after a change of government. It can accommodate three Icon class cruise ships, which are the largest in the world. And um, yeah, the next week is when it's going to open. But let's get your reaction to this. Um, this is, we keep hearing this, people concerned. Concerned about a place that has been allowed to deteriorate uh, and with very little, little done. And a painting here and there, a mural over there and over there. Um, sure. But overall, it's T-shirt and jewelry haven. Um, allowed to die a slow and painful death? This was, this was, this was a suicide. This was, this was what was done there. Um, 
What are we talking about? Why are we playing brand new? People have been warning us about this for decades. They've been plan upon plan upon plan about what to do downtown. And here we are still talking nonsense. What is really going on here? Development, people run, oh, it's going to destroy downtown. What is downtown? Three two three six two three two, three two five four three one six, three two five four two five nine. The texter just said it. There's a bunch of scooters and ATVs and dirt bikes up and down around. That's all you see. It is like Mad Max on steroids down there. It is a post-apocalyptic movie. It is insane. That's what downtown is. And people trying to braid your hair. What? Why are we joking around? Call us toll free, 242-300-5720. That sounds pretty exciting. Now, if that's what you want, then there we got it. Um, people might love it. It's like a movie down there. Wow. Right? But for the rest of us, mm. <sighs> what do you say, Laverne? When was the last time you went through downtown Nassau? You probably try to avoid it at all costs when you come in town. I, I, I don't go downtown, Nassau. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, I, I'm not sure downtown Freeport is too much better, but 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 we both cities have major issues in the what so-called downtown regions. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, All right, let's get your reaction, folks. Um, let's go to the text line. Um, Bahamians have to make up their mind about what kind of country they want. Um, my sister in the U.S. is paying three levels of taxes: local, state, and federal. Uh, you just left it there. Is that working for her? It, right? She can see the benefits for that. What are you saying? Is that what you're saying? Or, or maybe she's saying don't complain about the tax that oh, we maybe. have. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Uh, this person says here, um, uh, to the state minister that has a problem with the cruise port, please don't be creased up in any pictures toting wine glasses at the grand opening. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these one-hit well, wonders. Well, Dexter, you know that's going to happen for sure. But, you know, he's just saying he's concerned about downtown Nassau. Um, maybe really, you know, his concern is the is, is straw vendors. And I think that, Dwight, you most especially have talked about what needs to be done, what can be done, you know, what should be done with downtown Nassau. Hmm. Now, you know, the, the challenges, we've talked about this with the cruise port folks before, what they were doing with the vendors who are going to be there, they've required that the majority of everything they sell, if not everything, be authentically Bahamian, like made in the Bahamas, sourced from Bahamian materials. Um, so uh, that is going to be a marketing folks on the Nassau side, right, in downtown on Bay Street, um, who mm-hmm. are who have a whole lot of products made in anything, anywhere but the Bahamas. Um, right. So, well, it's time for them to step up. Step it up. you got to step up your game, right? You're competing against that now. What are you going to do? And you've known they're gonna, they, that they're going to do this. They've said this. It's been at least a year, maybe two years, that they've said this is what they want. Um, and now you're just going to sit back and say, well, my stuff's made. Mm, yeah. Anyway, the texture goes on to say some of these one hit wonders want nothing good for the country. Um, if they had no hand in it. Well, I mean that part. Oh boy. Texture. Okay. Um, this one says, yeah, Dwight long as you live, you will pay taxes the same way you prepare for death, prepare for taxes. Nothing in life is free. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Um, I have a very small business. I came into Inland Revenue, paid and uh, signed an agreement, and still was denied my, uh, um, I don't know if if this is a correct thing, uh, my TCC certificate, is that a thing? Hmm? They are screwing the small business. Oh, boy. Hmm. If any, um, okay, Um, this one says here, isn't it funny with all these educated in London trained like this word, um, people. In this nation, none could have come up with a nice cruise port upgrade. Maybe we need RCI or... or oh, okay, let's stop. Um, oh, boy. Okay. All right. Um, text is... 
Very sad that they killed the new central bank building, which would have helped with the redevelopment of downtown and possibly have been a catalyst for others. Yeah, still don't have a full understanding of what happened there, hey? Um, This one says, Campbell is pandering to the straw vendors who know they're not selling authentically Bahamian and are big-time PLP supporters. If you like it, let let it kill you. End of story. Eek. Mm. The front strip downtown can be converted into a pedestrian uh, crosswalk, I think, or boardwalk that will improve the overall infrastructure. The front strip, you're talking about Prince George Wharf? Yeah? Mm. Another one here. What is downtown, you ask? Um, Well, my answer is... (laughs) Can I read this? (laughs) (laughs) You're already halfway in. Oh, boy. This is a text. What's downtown, you ask? Well, my answer, P and mentally challenged people. Sprinkled, oh sprinkled in with people harassing the tourists. Ay, ay, ay. Maybe I should have edited that to say urine. Yes. Um, hmm. Wow. Um, is the government going to tax illegal migrants living on crown land for free and stealing light and water for free? Uh, you got That's what you're concerned about? Okay. Another one says that we need to encourage ships to stay until 10 p.m. to allow nighttime business. And most of the tours are Atlantis and boat tours. Government needs to clean up the hoodlums and hustlers. Police need to police properly. If we clean up hustlers, that in itself would be a huge help. Hmm. Mm-hmm. I hear you. I hear you. <sighs> you all have light, nightlife over there, Laverne? In the downtown Freeport area? No. Uh-uh. Mm. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. Um, the food store probably is the <laughs> only thing that, that, that stays open beyond 6 o'clock oh, dear. downtown. <clears throat> so no, that's pretty you know. sad. Mm-hmm. That's well, well, Port Lokaya is the place you would go to, I guess, if you want a touristy type experience. I guess. I guess. <laughs> Sound very enthusiastic. Oh that's boy. Good. Oh, yes, TCC, Tax Compliance Certificate. Yeah, that's needed to bid on okay. government contracts if you it shows that right. you are up to date with the payment. So, so it's the tax just saying that if you go in and you make your payment arrangements, begin to pay, you still won't get that. That's that's what they're saying? They're saying that's their experience. I, maybe That has else. been their experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, let's take this call really quickly, and then we've got to take a break. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Good morning. Hi. Why are you trying to insult the very man? You know, downtown people at Delhi get daylight to <laughs> nightlight. <laughs> Stop it, man. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, 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 hey. you know, I don't crack oh, hey, jokes hey, on hey, report. Don't you know, jokes you know, on report. Hey, Let you me know that. do that. I talk to you. We've got to do better for both cities. This is very sad. <laughs> this is not a laughing matter. This, thank you, thank you, caller. Um, this is a terrible thing. This is a tourist destination. What is going on here, man? We aren't serious at all. We've handed everything over to the hotels. Y'all, y'all deal with this, right? And that, mm-hmm. and and this is Atlantis is talking a lot these days, a lot. Yeah. Um, but but th- what have they done to help downtown Nassau? The tourists come here off these cruise ships and immediately go to Atlantis. Because there is nothing down here for them. A t shirt. But it's and a just store. but you said but you said it, Dwight. You said it. We've uh kinda we've said to ourselves and whomever, okay, you decide. Yeah. You determine what, what uh the Bahamas the culture of the Bahamas oh, will yes. look like. We've put it in their hands. You said it right. The culture of the Bahamas in the hands of these mega resorts that are tied yes. to to countries that are in places we can't even spell. Exactly. And, um, it's, we've, it's, we've done that. Yeah. Yep. And, and, and now we're talking downtown, nonsense. Now we're talking the nonsense. The longer downtown is neglected, you know, and nothing's happening, and uh, you don't want to um, repossess these buildings and push them down that has been left in a state of, of disrepair for eons and eons and eons, you know. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, text messages as we go to the break. This person says, the bottom line is that we need people living downtown. This will encourage a nightlife and bring life to downtown. We need investment to build housing and condos downtown. Wasn't that the plan before or when we moved the shipping companies? It certainly was. It certainly was. And how many years has that been now, right? Um, uh, morning, the person who are the ambassadors for tourism are just as bad as the bag and cigar people urinating on the dirty streets. Bay Street is done. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Wow. Another um, one here. Those ATVs are not roadworthy and need regulation. Um, they do days or should uh, or allowed to descend on Jaws Beach on mass doing donuts. Besides, people trying to enjoy the beach. Bahamian administrations suck at civil regulation. Wow. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Another one here. I love the amphitheater component of the cruise port. At least some Bahamian artists will be performing. Let's hope so. Yeah. Fingers um, crossed. It's not Atlantis' job to build downtown. Downtown must com. So if they fail, they fail. I agree with you. I'm just saying that they are acting concerned now when they have contributed. Well, they haven't done anything to help the situation. And people are just ushered out of the area straight over to Paradise Island. And that's that's all they know. They right? They get off the trip and let me go and see Atlantis. Right. But um, but I don't blame them. There is nothing downtown. Um, but, um, more, but decay. Decay. And I'm sure uh, nobody wants to see decay on their holiday on their vacation all right we're gonna take a break and be back when we come back um tipping who should you tip what should you tip should you tip all of that stay with us this is morning blend on guardian radio 96.9 this is guardian radio 96.9 fm nassau bahamas This is AP News. I'm Rita Foley. President Biden's in Japan this morning, where world leaders have gathered for the G7 summit. Russia's war in Ukraine expected to be a subject high on the agenda. For the shared values, including supporting the brave people of Ukraine as they defend their sovereign territory and holding Russia accountable for its brutal aggression. And this morning... Russia has launched cruise missiles at Ukraine's capital and the Odessa region in anticipation of a counteroffensive. Loud explosions were heard in Kyiv, and falling debris caused a fire in a non-residential building. In the southern region of Odessa, one person died, and two were wounded in a Russian missile attack. However, a spokesperson for Odessa's military administration said most of the missiles were shot down over the sea. Earlier in the week, Ukrainian air defences thwarted an intense Russian air attack on Kyiv, shooting down all missiles aimed at the capital. Ukraine's military defence has been bolstered by sophisticated Western-supplied systems. I'm Karen Chamas. Montana is banning TikTok, the first state in the union to do that. Montana's new law prohibits downloads of TikTok in the state and would fine any app store or TikTok each time somebody is offered the ability to download the app or access TikTok. A Chinese tech company owns TikTok. The new law takes effect January 1st. Customs and Border Protection says an 8-year-old girl died Wednesday in Border Patrol custody. The child and her family in Harlingen, Texas, one of the busiest corridors for illegal crossings, when she had a medical emergency and was taken to a hospital where she died. No details and no word on her nationality. Police in New Zealand have arrested a man and charged him with arson in connection with a fire at a Wellington hostel that killed at least six people. This is AP News. A man's been sentenced for eight killings. An Islamic extremist received 10 life sentences for killing eight people with a truck on a bike path in Manhattan in 2017. As he announced the sentence, Judge Vernon Broderick said the conduct in this case by Saifullo Saipov was among the worst, if not the worst, he's ever seen. A life sentence was mandatory after the jury rejected the death penalty. In a rambling rant delivered through a translator, Saipov spent most of an hour talking about the creation of religions and how the devil was instrumental in the creation of the human population. When he finished, a relative of one of the victims stood up and shouted, The only act of the devil here is the act you did. Marion Van Reeth lost her legs in the attack. She looked Saipov in the eyes. He did the wrong thing. He did the thing. Van Reith told Saipov she will never be able to walk like he can. I'm Ed Donahue. And I'm Rita Foley, AP News. (laughs) 
got your free Discover Mortgage Ideas shaped around you. In your real-time traffic, Mala Butler Highway, as usual, your hotspot this morning. Fire trail from Fire Trail straight up to Tawny Glooms, Darling Highway. You'll see that heavy traffic in the northbound lanes. Glaston Road looking a little bit better for you, though, as an alternate route. Uh, traffic about midway between Fire Trail and uh, John F. Kennedy Drive if you're heading northbound. Blue Hill Road is busy for you uh, near Carmichael and especially north of Soldier Road on the way to the roundabout with Independence Drive. Independence Drive traffic building in both directions, eastbound and westbound between the roundabouts. Soldier Road also looking a bit busy for you, um, especially near Windsor Place and then north of the Robinson Road and Prince Charles Drive intersection. Uh, We'll get to that in a bit, but um, East Street near the intersection with Soldier Road is busy as well, northbound on the way to the the Independence Drive East-West Highway roundabout. So back to Soldier Road. Again, that's heavy traffic from uh, Prince Charles Road, Robinson Road, straight up through Bernard, Wolf, and Village Road, Robinson Road, between Soldier and Old Trail. Also heavy traffic there westbound. Prince Charles Drive near Beatrice Avenue, westbound. Slow going traffic there and uh, near Elizabeth Estates and Fox Hill Road as well. Eastern Road, you're not going to be moving much at the end. Johnson Road. And elsewhere, we're seeing some building traffic on Carmichael westbound to Coral Harbor Road and West Bay Street eastbound to Saunders Beach and the roundabout with New Providence Highway. That's what we're looking at so far. That's your real-time traffic. And your morning blend traffic alert brought to you by RBC. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash home story to start your mortgage story today. We'll be back with more morning blend after these messages here on Guardian Radio 96.9. <laughs> Everybody's idea of home is different, so every mortgage should be unique, shaped around you, flexible to move and change as you do. RBC will come to you to get you started and stay by your side to help guide you every step of the way. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash home story and start your story today. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at RBC Caribbean. The sixth edition of the Bahamas Games are on the way. July 7th through the 15th, get ready for inter-island sporting competition in the spirit of unity and camaraderie. Which island is going to win? It's the Bahamas Games. Our nation, our talent, our games. And look out for the B Games crew coming to your island soon. For more information, call 809 Visit thebahamasgames.org. Total Auto Care on Howard Road offers fast, quality auto maintenance at the very best prices. Tune-ups, oil changes, brakes, suspension, wheel alignments, radiators, water pump replacements, and more. Need quality brand name tires for your vehicle? Tires that'll stand up to these roads? No worries. We supply Michelin, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, Pirelli, and Toyo. We'll import them fast and install them for you at no extra cost. So when your car needs maintenance or quality tires, we're on Howard Road, just before Burger King. Come see us. Total Auto Care. Call us at 341-6599 or 341-2350. Wherever you're headed, the Custom Computers Know-How team is standing by to help guide you in the East and the West. We now have two convenient locations on Patton Street in Palmdale and our newest store in the Caves Village Shopping Plaza through the Blake Road entrance. Discover the latest products by top international brands and the knowledge you need to unleash tomorrow's technology today. Drop by Custom Computers out east or out west. We're open Saturdays from 10 till 4. People, what you thinking? People, something different. People, what you wanting? Sign the petition and find out more information at risebahamas.net. Ready to save? You can put $100 into the CFAL Savings Express Plan and make sure your money keeps growing. Earn interest on your savings while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interests 
is our interest. Visit cfal.com to start now. CFAL, growing well for future generations of Bahamians. The third annual Acklands Cascarilla Heritage Festival, June 8th to the 11th. Come celebrate down home style during three days packed with activities. Hear native stories and songs as we kick off opening night at the King Eric Vagata Park. Explore Acklands and its rich history, family roots, and natural resources, all while sightseeing. Taste island cuisine and enjoy cultural activities every night on the Regatta Park grounds. We've got bark beating contests, quadrille dancing, cascarilla racing, and activities for the kids. Music performances by Ebony242, the Magical Beat Band, and other special guests. The third annual Acklands Cascarilla Heritage Festival. June 8th to the 11th, down in Spring Point, Acklands. Book your seats now by calling Bahamas Air. See you there. This ad has been sponsored by Screws and Fasteners World. Welcome back to Morning Blend here on Guardian Radio 96.9. We are streaming live on GuardianTalkRadio.com and on the Guardian Radio app for smart devices. We're also on your televisions on Cable Bahamas Channel 969 and BTC Flow Channel 612. You can tweet us at 969 or Facebook.com slash MorningBlend969. Text us on the Guardian Radio text line powered by BTC 4224796. Standard text rate supply. And once again, at 821, time for another check of your weather for today, brought to you by Bahamas First Insurance. Here is what's going on. We've got a weak pressure pattern that continues to support light to gentle breezes across the islands, while streaming moisture will enhance the chances of shower activity there remains a possibility of funnel cloud or water spot activity across all areas, and residents should be trying to remain hydrated and limit outdoor activities during peak sun hours as the heat index is going to be a major factor today and has been for the past few days and will be for the next few months, so keep that in mind. For all areas today, we're looking at partly sunny and hot conditions with a few isolated showers and thunderstorms becoming variably cloudy and warm with isolated showers and thunderstorms tonight. Expect gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Temperatures today getting up to around 86 Fahrenheit, 30 Celsius, but it will feel hotter than that. Overnight lows to 3 Celsius. In your extended outlook, weak high pressure will remain across the islands, generating light to gentle breezes. However, low-level troughing is expected to produce showery activity through Saturday. So for Friday, tomorrow, partly cloudy, hot, and humid with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. Saturday, partly cloudy, hot, and humid again, with scattered showers and isolated thunderstorms. That's your morning blend weather check, brought to you by Bahamas First. Visit firstonlineinsurance.com and select a Bahamas First agent to purchase, pay, or renew your car or home insurance 100% online, or just stop by any Bahamas First agent. Bahamas First, celebrating 40 years as the first Bahamian general insurance company. What's first for you comes first for us. And time 
time for another check of your traffic for this morning. Brought to you by RBC. Discover mortgage ideas shaped around you in your real-time traffic this morning. Independence Drive, heavy traffic both directions, but especially westbound. As you head toward the uh, roundabout with Blue, Blue Hill Road. Blue Hill Road also busy for you from especially north of Soldier Road on the way to that roundabout with Independence Drive. And there's congestion near Carmichael Road as well and even near St. Vincent Road. And at the intersection with Cowpen, South Beach Zion Boulevard, especially southbound on Blue Hill Road at that point. That area looking very busy, especially between uh, East Street and Blue Hill Road for Zion Boulevard. So good luck to you there. Over on Milo Butler Highway, as usual, heavy traffic from well south of the Fire Trail Roundabout straight up to the roundabout with Tawny Gwim's Darling Highway. And that will continue straight through to... The six-legged roundabout northbound, you're going to see some traffic there. And eastbound on JFK, southbound on your Providence Highway. On West Bay Street, near Saunders Beach and your Providence Highway, that area is looking congested for you, eastbound and northbound on your Providence Highway to the roundabout. Claston Road, busy also. Traffic midway between Fire Trail and JFK Drive in the northbound lanes. Other hot spots for you, as usual, Eastern Road from just west of San Susie now to about Johnson Road, westbound, slow-moving traffic there. Bernard Road near the schools in the area, also congested, and Prince Charles Drive at the major intersections. Robinson Road, not moving much between Soldier and Old Trail. And Soldier Road on the way to Bernard, Wolf, and Village, looking busy for you. Mackey Street, multiple directions, but especially northbound. And Shirley between Village and Mackey Street, slow-moving traffic there. Downtown, getting to downtown on uh, West Bay Street, near Nassau Street, also congested for you. That's what we're looking at, a busy commute for many. Good luck, and that's your real-time traffic and your morning blend traffic alert brought to you by RBC. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash home story to start your mortgage story today. Could win your share of $1,000 and free annual memberships when you apply for your Mobile Assist Visa Travel Rewards Card. It's a prepaid visa that gives you access to travel and online shopping deals worldwide every single day. Enter automatically when you successfully apply through our Mobile Assist app. Use your prepaid visa five times or more and you are automatically entered to win your share of $1,000. See our social media pages for more details. Apply, save, and win with Mobile Assist. When faced with an illness like cancer, we band together, and we at Cleveland Clinic in Florida have your back. From advanced cancer treatments to extra safety measures at all of our locations, we're with you on this journey. For every infusion and follow-up, for every step of the way, for every care in the world, Cleveland Clinic in Florida. Get the care you need when and where you need it. To learn more or connect with a local representative, Visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. Everybody's idea of home is different. So every mortgage should ground you. Flexible to move and change as you do. RBC will come to you to get you started and stay by your side to help guide you every step of the way. Visit rbc.com slash Caribbean slash home story and start your story today. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook at RBC Caribbean. Take some advice from your Aunt Angie. Don't lie on your resume. Because if you say you've got trapeze experience, someone might shoot you out of a cannon and expect you to do a gymnast routine while flying through the air at 82 miles an hour. And just because you want to land on your feet doesn't mean you will. But if you're smart, you'll have CG Medical Insurance, so you get the best coverage for the price. Get the best coverage for the price. CG Atlantic Medical and Life Insurance. Good like that. All benefits are subject to policy provisions, including eligibility at the time of service. The Access Accelerator Small Business Development Center is here to help small businesses throughout the entire Bahamas. To better serve you, we've made it easier to contact us. Call 461-7232, WhatsApp 359-0626 or 359-2394, Email helpdesk at spdcbahamas.com or submit a ticket when you visit our help center at Access Accelerator, empowering small business. People, what you thinking? We want something different. Uh-huh. People, what you wanting? We want local government. I can tell them no more slunking. We want the edge function. I can tell them no more slunking. 
Yeah, tell them it's no more Joe. Ha <laughs> ha, I ain't forgot. Going down Blue Hill Road, going down Business Road, going down Nassau Road. We want local government. We want local government. This is right. We want local government. Share the love. We want local government. We are called for local government. Sign the petition and find out more information at risebahamas.net. Tired of paying too many bills and loan payments each month? Shrink your monthly debt payments down to one easy payment with our debt consolidation loan. It also has a built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Inquire about our debt consolidation loans today. Call 356-7764. Ready to step into the future? From your front door to the backyard and everywhere in between. See and speak to whoever's there with ring video doorbells and security cameras now available at Alive. Protect with matters most, all from one easy app. Available in your Google or Apple Play Store. Visit bealive.com slash ring to learn more. We are Alive. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Hey! Sing in the building, everybody has some in the air. Who not? Sing in the building, everybody has some in the air. Let's go! We're back here with Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong along with Laverne Gardner. And we're changing gears this morning. We're talking about uh, tipping, tipping standards in the country today and, and service, how it relates to customer service. Joining us this morning, very pleased to have back with us Simone Bo, a human resource professional for many, many years. And she's going to help to guide us through this. Simone, always a pleasure. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Dwight, and to your listening audience. It's good to be back. All right, so we'll get to service in a bit, but let's talk about tipping. Uh, we're seeing lots of uh, conversations about uh, what's happening out there over the past few weeks, I think, as more and more of us get out since the pandemic. Um, these realities are, are, especially with seeing the gratuity and the VAT on these bills, and then knowing that people are expecting tips or you're, you're encouraged to tip or you feel inclined to tip. But let's talk about it. Um, uh, if you see a gratuity there, um, are you, do you really need to tip more? Well, tipping really is a practice that has come from the need to show appreciation for a service rendered. And so when people go over and above in the service, people feel inclined to go over and above in the tip. Now, some people would argue, well, if I'm already mandated to give a, a mandatory tip, I shouldn't have to give over and above. And, you know, you really don't. But people tend to do that when they feel the service warrants it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you, you you aren't necessarily required to. I mean, the, the pressure it does seem to be on, though, um, that this is this might not, the gratuity might not necessarily go to your server. Um, and even though it was, let's say it was mediocre, it were worse than mediocre, um, does that mean that you don't have to? Actually, no. I have seen where people have argued and said that uh, the service was not at a level that deserved this 15% tip, and people have refused to pay it, and restaurants have taken it off because they they gave service, did not deserve it. The actual gr- gratuity, they've taken that off. The gratuity, yeah. yes. Okay. They would argue and say, I don't, I don't think, because that's what it's really for. Yeah. It's not as if it's a service charge or a VAT or something like that. It is specifically to be paid for service rendered. Yeah. So this is becoming an issue here and we're, we're seeing it every day now in the U.S. people talking about it. So the machines now are, in addition to the gratuity and the VAT, asking you if you would like to leave a tip and suggesting you know, 10%, 12%, 15% or more and ask you to put in which one you want there. Um, how should we feel about that? 
Uh, mm-hmm. But what what should your reaction be? Even if it was great service, that 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 it's already it's it's included in the in, in your payment options. I wouldn't put any pressure to pay that if they're asking for it because um, <laughs> if you're not that impressed with the service, you don't have to give over and above what you're already mandated to give. You know, um, a lot of times, and I guess we got to understand what happens behind the scenes, you know, historically, that 15% really to the server that served you. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, we have companies who are doing pooled tips, pooled, P-O-O-L-E-D. So what that means is they are taking all of the gratuity that they collect and then it's divided among all of the servers. And in some cases, what we would call the heart of the house or the back of the house staff, which would be staff in the kitchen, uh, would also get a percentage of that total gratuity collected. So In some cases, that extra tip is what will actually go to your server. Mm -hmm. They would only get a portion of the 15%. And so that's where some servers push for for what they call the hand tip or the cash tip, that over and above tip, because that would go directly to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that 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 says a lot there. So now that's why so many people do feel the extra pressure there. Um, exactly. Yeah. Um, all right. So so how do you handle this? Um, what what should be the standard? Is, should you do ten percent, fifteen percent, eight more? What 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 do you recommend? Um, I think the standard is fine. I think what we have to look at really are the service levels. That's the problem, Mm -hmm. you know, and and when people take for granted that I'm going to get it, no matter what kind of service problem. So I think organizations have to focus in on service training and the importance of service delivery and that tips are not an expectation. Tips are a reward for something that you have done. You know, that's over and above, really, what's required. Mm -hmm. You know, you are required to serve me. Now, if you do an exceptional job in serving me, and and people's idea of exceptional um, is different, you know. For some people, it could be you were just polite. For other people, you were fast. For other people, you got my order right. You know, so exceptional could be different things to different people. And so it's a personal choice if I want to give you more. I could give you more because you were just super friendly. You were nice to my child, whatever that may be, right? So it's about teaching people not to run after the tip, but to deliver memories and experiences. That's what we do in hospitality, Mm -hmm. right? It's about giving memories and experiences, creating an, an atmosphere where people can enjoy their meal, but it's an experience. It is not just a transaction. I have money, you have food, and we make this exchange. That's not what it is. You know, people want to have an experience yeah. and whatever that means for them, you know? I'm um, Simone. Good morning. How are you? Good this morning. is Laverne. Hey, Laverne. Um, question, but is there like an amount maybe kind of like when you're working it out? Okay, so I have this thing. If there's nothing exceptional about the service, if it's just, okay, you brought my food from the back, kind of no experience, as you put it, because I'm always, I tell everybody, that's the one thing everybody is looking for, no matter what they're doing, is an experience, right? So if I don't really have an experience, I just go with whatever that, the 15% gratuity that's already on there. And I leave it at that. If I've had great service beyond that, then I tip, you know, based on on that. But is there like a standard amount? Like some people, that no matter what kind of service they have, I know people who aren't going to tip more than five dollars. <laughs> they don't you know, like that's it mm-hmm. for them. Yeah. Five dollars, and that's it. So, is there like a minimum, or do you kind of base it on what your bill is? I'm talking about the minimum. 
<laughs> because I think uh, for me, if I get really great service, I want to tip beyond the 15% and I want to tip well. Yeah. So typically, I don't think there's a, a minimum amount per se, but I think a rule of thumb is, yes, you do look, you look at the, the level of service and the experience that you would have had. And then you may look at maybe doing an additional 5 to 10% on top of the 5%. You know, um, depending on the amount of the bill. Mm. That's typically how I've seen it done. Yeah. You know, and some people just do it based off emotion. You know, I'm, I'm a singer as well. And so I've been in environments where people would tip me for singing a song that they want to hear. And they'd give me $100. You know, i have so it's up to the person, but I believe you also want to look at it in comparison to the level of performance given. Yeah. Right. That's really what it's about. Yeah. yeah. You know, well, well, Simone, I'm just saying, I don't, Dwight doesn't sound like he's a very good tipper. Excuse me? I don't know how you wrote me into this, uh, Laverne. Anyway, it depends. It depends on the situation. depends on what that final bill is. And and as you say, uh, Simone, it depends on the service, right? So that really makes a big difference there. Um, yeah. All right. So I know that um, this is a totally different issue, but I, I know that there were, there were some mumblings about it initially, but Behem has been very good about accepting the fact that there is and that uh, on your bill, if you're out, especially out at a restaurant. And, I, you know, I just find that mind-boggling and then to know that people are still expecting tips there it really is making this a very uh, expensive expensive place to live it is i mean when you think about it that's you know that's what 25 percent that's tacked on to your bill Mm -hmm. which which is a good amount um and then i think when people have this attitude of an expectation of more yeah you know, that, that has to be realistic. You know, that has to be taken into consideration with, you know, um, what have I given to deserve that? Mm-hmm. And I don't think people are approaching it from that mindset. They're just thinking of the money that they want to make. They're not thinking of the service that they've delivered. Right. Right. Exactly. You know? All right, so we want to get into service in just a bit, but um, we've got quite a few messages about tipping here, and if you want to add to this, um, text us 422-4796 or tweet us at MorningBlend969 or call in 323-6232-325-4316-325-4259 or toll-free 242-300-5720. All right, this person says here, um, um, in some countries who are completely against the hospital, um, who are completely against, completely, who we are complete, competing, oh, the hospitality staff does not accept tips. Our 242 is out of control with wanting tips for everything. We are an overpriced country. We have some of the worst service levels in our region and staff still looking for tips. Well, Okay. Um, this person says here, tipping shouldn't exist in the first place. Corporate America created it because they didn't want to pay their servers, pay the employees more. Mm. Um, let's hear what this caller has to say. Good morning, caller. You're on the air. Hey, good morning, Dwight. How are you? Doing well. Good morning. Good morning to your guests and good morning to the nation. Yeah, Dwight, I, I, I'm a tipper also, but, um, my tipping comes by the leading of the Holy Spirit. I, um... If I see somebody working and I watch them and everything, I basically rely on the Holy Spirit to tell me what it is. So if it's $25, if it's $40, if it's 50 100 whatever it is, whatever the Spirit put in my spirit, I give it to them. And, I, I, and I've seen, Dwight, by doing that, I have seen people walk away saying, God, you're so good. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. See, because God knows that person's need. And if you rely on the Spirit of God through their need to you, and you tip according to that, you know, I think the person's appreciated and everything. And then <laughs> there, have been, there have been times where I have had no needing to tip at all. And, you know, the service has not been that good. Um, uh, whereas, you know, so I just pay whatever the gratuity is, and I leave it as that, you know. But in most cases, behemoths are such pleasant people when it comes down to service and stuff like that. 
most people get extra tips from me because, you know, based on whatever the Holy Spirit put in my spirit, I just, I just tip them according to that. So what's the most the Holy Spirit ever led you to tip someone? After $150, um, you know, you see, I also with people on the side of the road, I also go by the leading with that. And people are asking for money on the side of the road. Sometimes, you know, I know because you know they want drugs. Uh, if you if you if you're led by the spirit, you know that these persons want drugs or alcohol. So you don't do it, or you do it if the Holy Spirit leads you to do it because they're saying that they're hungry. You do it, and you say, "Listen, I'm giving you this for food, not drugs and all that." No, no, sir, no, sir. I'm going to buy food. I said, "Okay, that's between you and God now." All right, and I leave that as that, but. Hmm. Yeah, but um, um, I sometimes you know, typically I say if you do it by the leading of the Holy Spirit, God knows what the person needs. So you know, it may be a hundred, maybe three hundred dollars. Oh my! If you have it, uh, feed it. You know. Uh, okay. All right. Well, uh, well, all right. Thank you very much. Well, well, um, hmm. Simone, do you recommend that? Simone. Does she not want to answer that one? But, no, she's on mute. Uh, Simone, you're on mute. Okay, Laverne, you ever... Um, hmm. uh, okay, hey, that might be a good place to take a break. Let's do that, and when we come back, we'll talk some more about uh, customer service and, um, uh, and uh, how we are doing in that regard. We had a little bit to say about this last week. I want to talk more about that with Simone Bo when we get back. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. Total Auto Care on Howard Road offers fast, quality auto maintenance at the very best prices. Tune-ups, oil changes, brakes, suspension, wheel alignments, radiators, water pump replacements, and more. Need quality brand name tires for your vehicle? Tires that'll stand up to these roads? No worries. We supply Michelin, BF Goodrich, Bridgestone, Pirelli, and Toyo. We'll import them fast and install them for you at maintenance or quality tires. We're on Howard Road, just before Burger King. Come see us. Total Auto Care. Call us at 341-6599 or 341-2350. It's been 35 years since Custom Computers was founded, and we'd like to celebrate that milestone by thanking you, our clients and customers. You've inspired 35 years of expert service and support, partnering with the world's leading brands like HP, Apple, and Microsoft. We take pride in setting the bar for what you expect and deserve from a homegrown Bahamian business. We're here to serve you when you need us. So call 396 11 no one. Custom Computers, raising the standard since 1987. When faced with an illness like cancer, we band together. And we at Cleveland Clinic in Florida have your back. From advanced cancer treatments to extra safety measures at all of our locations, we're with you on this journey for every infusion and follow-up, for every step of the way, for every care in the world. Cleveland Clinic in Florida. Get the care you need when and where you need it. To learn more or connect with a local representative, Visit clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. We're back here with Morning Blend on Garden Radio 96.9. Dwight Strong along with Laverne Gardner. We're talking with Simone Bo about uh, tipping and customer service here in the country. Uh, getting uh, your reaction to it as well. Give us a call. 323-6232. 325-4316-325-4259. And toll free 242-300-5720. Text us, 422-4796. Caller, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Dwight. How you doing? Doing well. I got a money, Miss Paul. Good morning, Miss Gardner, darling, grandmama. I have been getting grandmama, but but right. Yeah? Let me tell you something. I, okay. I, I love good service, and I've been to restaurants where the waiter and the waiter treat me so good. I have a problem with tipping them $1,000. 
or two thousand dollars or hundred dollars. Because I think service is important. In terms of exclusive restaurant I've been into, they know how to serve you. you are are you saying you've tipped somebody a thousand dollars? No, no, no. I'm saying oh. I, I tipped them. Yeah, sorry, I tipped them. Yeah, a thousand dollars? No, no. I'm saying their service are so good. Mm. I would tip them the highest money. Mm-hmm. I could tip them. Normally, I would tip them like twenty dollars, fifty dollars, or something like that. But I've, I have no problem tipping them any amount of money because I love good service. Like being in some people's restaurant, they know how to serve you. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. That's have, have a good day. Great. Thank you. To hear. Good to hear that. Um, well, that brings up somebody's asking about the civil servants expecting a tip just because they did their job. Um, uh, what do you say about that, Laver? That uh, and uh, Simona, especially um, uh, people. <laughs> that is. <laughs> This is a big problem here. We know this. And, 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 and in other circles, in other parts of the world, that's called corruption. But um, what do you say about that? Um, for me, I am a tipper if I feel that you've gone above and beyond to assist me or render a service. I'm not tipping because you took my application form. I'm not tipping because you processed my application because that's what you're supposed to do. And I am 100% not tipping when you start. But you're looking for a tip. Mm. <laughs> and so what I started doing is saying things like, are you asking me to tip you? <laughs> I'm sure you, 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 were, you were treated very well after that. Boy, um, but, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, gonna do it. Yeah. I'm not gonna do it if you're doing whatever uh, your job, and you're not. It's not like you're doing it in an exceptional way. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, Simone, that's almost become accepted, though. What, what, what are we to do in situations like this? Yeah, I remember having a a similar experience with um, performing my role with a particular government agency, you know, going to submit some applications and that. And and the person actually told me, um, (laughs) she was like, you coming in here swinging on? I must just say, you know, where where are the gifts? (laughs) Where are the corporate gifts? I'm like, what? I looked at her like, a dear... And had lights. I was like, what are you talking about? Because <laughs> this is your job. Like, I didn't know there was an expectation that we had to gift you. I mean, did she even yeah. say it in a joking way? Like she like laughing it off or anything? No. No, no. Oh, I mean, okay. She, she meant that. Oh, she boy. she she meant that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think uh when I've seen it as a corporate practice sometimes, you know, at say Christmas time at the end of the year for a year of being a, a partner to the business or whatever that you would perhaps extend a gesture like that. You know, that's why some companies would offer like a a vendor appreciation type thing, or they may have an event or something that they would invite persons that they've worked with over the year. And just to show their appreciation, I think something like that is okay. But when there's this expectation that as uh, Laverne said, you know, just for you to do your job, not nothing extra, nothing over the top. You didn't, um, you know, make it faster or better or anything else. You're just saying before I even get started, I need this to mm-hmm. get this done. Um, and I, I believe there are a number of reasons that account for that. I think a lot of it is because, like you said, it's become a common practice and an accepted practice. I think a part of it has to do with, quite honestly, um, pay scales. <laughs> and people just don't make enough money, so they feel they have to extort whatever they need from the public. You know, uh, this is just a number of things that go into it. But definitely not. I think tipping, as I mentioned before, should be for service that was rendered that's over and above the, uh, this is my job. Mm. Wow. Um, let's take this call, and then we want to get into customer service and the challenges we're seeing here. Um, good morning. You're on the air. Good morning, Dwight. Good morning, Laverne. Good morning, my, my beautiful friend, Simone. You know, it's always an opportunity to talk about subjects like this, especially as a person who has been exposed, in particular in the, in the, hosp- in the hotel sector, you know, where, we, where it is normal on a daily basis to see 
uh, the customer tipping staff for services. Um, it, it is a norm. You know, Simone said something that is very uh, prevalent in, in, in the hotel industry, and that is simply that, you know, when you look at the pay scales, a lot of the employees would step up to provide uh, services that goes beyond the normal. You know, um, there in the hotel, it says, you know, your customer or, or even anticipate, anticipate your customer's needs. And uh, many employees in the hotel sector, being that I have served over 34 years in that sector, I can tell you many employees past and even present uh, have, have programmed themselves that, okay, well, yes, this is my job. Yes, I'm supposed to uh, provide certain things, but then to anticipate your customer's needs and wants. You know, you could get pancakes, but uh, the customer didn't ask for syrup. They didn't ask for whipped cream. But yet the, 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 the worker brought the whipped cream anyway to wow the customer. That is something from the last wowing the customer. That is That was part of the what you call the culture of the nature. So, you know, tipping is, is, is something that I see is not a bad thing. It is simply just an encouragement for, for the employee to step up and anticipate the, 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 the customer's needs to carry the service level to, a, to another level. And that's all that is. Thank mm. you for taking my call. All right. So I'm curious. What if you, you know, the, the bill was a little bit bigger than you expected? Um, like you, you blew through everything <laughs> um, that you had um, or that you, you were prepared to spend and um, you, you left with maybe a dollar and a quarter afterward. And you really did appreciate the service, but you got nothing left to give after the gratuity and the VAT and that giant bill. What, what do you do in a situation like that? Um, Simone, um, do, you, do you tell the, the server, hey, if I had it, I really, really would because you're excellent. Um, does, does, does that bring any comfort at all? Uh, does that help to pay the bills or to sleep well at night for that server who gave their all to this? Um, or what, what do you do? Do we lose Simone? Muted again? Yes. Yeah, okay, well, I, there I think go. that um, in cases like that, people would use their credit card. Mm -hmm. There's there's a space there for tips, and you can put an extra thing on there before they close out the check. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not using a credit card and you don't have any money, I think to me, it would be better if you just told them, you know, boy, I'm, I'm tapped out right now, and you know. I'll, well, first of all, don't make promises you're not going to keep. If you're not going to come back and give them more money or handle them the next time or <laughs> right. whatever it is that we say to people, don't make false promises. Mm. Just give your appreciation verbally mm -hmm. and let them know, you know, I really wish I could do some more, but boy, you know, you know, you all build top me out that right now. And I really wish I could do some more because your service was just that exceptional. Yeah. I think people would appreciate that better than you handing them some quarters or a dollar or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, right. All right. So we only have a couple minutes left. I want to ask about service. I told a story last week about um, a customer getting frustrated in front of some uh, servers and how one snapped basically and said, you know, y'all customers try to drive me crazy. I sick of daddy. Y'all. I'm like, wow. And, and I didn't really think the customer did anything that warranted that response. Um, but some others disagreed. But in any event, um, people seem to have no filter or, or, or will speak unbridled these days in front of customers and tell them what they think about them. Um, and um, it's it's quite quite special what's going on. What do you say? People will say it's about keeping it real, but um, it's just really shameful. Um, I don't know if that is a unique experience, but what, what do you make of that where people will just tell you like, we don't care if you never come back here, get out of here because you, whatever, whatever. Um, what's that all about? You're on mute again, I think, Simone. Still muted. Yes, still. Yeah, he's still muted. Okay. Yikes. I don't know if you're experiencing that, Laverne, where people just are really, you know, 
the, yeah. customer, the customer is king days are, are over. And, and truly, some customers are demonic. We, will, we can admit that. But, but to the response that some employees, not even the, the owner of the company, the, the things that they right. will say, like, this is, this is a bit wild. Um, I don't know what's I, I, happening. And you know, and I think you, you really just try to de-escalate as much as possible. Mm -hmm. If if you see that's going their co-worker and it's something that you could kind of step in if you feel like or see like your, um, your co-worker is losing it or it sounds like they're about to lose it, you know, um, you, you say, well, Dwight, how, how can I help you with this? Let's see how best we can resolve this issue. Mm hmm you know, kind of if you if you can, but sometimes it's just that one employee and the customer and the employee has had enough. Um, maybe they have other personal things going on as well. Sometimes sometimes customers are extremely rude. Yes. Because they feel as if you're supposed to serve me. So you take whatever I do. And, you know, you just try to find a way to render service and but not not have people treat you in a demeaning way. And that is and that is very difficult. Yeah. Very, very difficult. Yeah, very much so. But uh, again, that's where training comes in. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can't just continue to hire people, put them in service industries and training and part of the training has to be conflict resolution mm -hmm. it just absolutely has to be yeah and i think that more companies need to invest in making sure that that is what they're doing that they are providing the training and giving their employees the tools that they need to be able to navigate those sticky situations yeah my outlook is this i know we say the customer is always right I don't agree. <laughs> I don't agree that the customer is always right. But what I will say is it is our responsibility if we are rendering service to see how best we can bring resolution. Yeah. Uh, did we lose Simone entirely? No. Oh, okay. Still He's still there. I know you have to go. You can lose me soon, though. Yes, yes. You know you have to go. Um, but yeah, it's the, with customer service, um, uh, some people just are just telling you like it is. Like we we don't care if we lose you. Um, and I will tell you how much I hate you in front of everybody. Uh, uh, I'm seeing that a lot more often. What do you make of that? Still having an issue there. Yeah, um, I think service is a problem um, in so many areas, and and you're right. It's not even just the the representative of the company, but it's even managers. You know, and because if an employee can tell you that they don't care or go somewhere else or whatever, they have to be supported by that. Mm -hmm. A or the their leadership just doesn't know what their staff is saying to, to, to the public. And more often than not, I have found where managers support that type of behavior. You know, they right. are the ones who are equally as rude and not accommodating. Like I, I've, it's amazing when you travel and you compare, you know, we, we so like to pride ourselves in the Bahamas of having this amazing destination and this amazing service and all of that. But when you travel, and you see the way that people cater to you, mm -hmm. the level of service that people give you, you know, then you start to make the comparison and you say, you know what, we're really not as hospitable as we we sell ourselves to be. For instance, in the restaurant business, for example, restaurants, um, say in the U.S., for instance, and they're happy to make certain substitutions for you mm -hmm. and accommodations. You know, if you say, well, I would prefer to have a salad or could I swap this out or could you take this off? Could I have this instead of that? More often than not, their answer is yes. Right. At many places here. Oh, my God. And I found the answer is no. Mm -hmm. It's no off the top. Yep. No. This yep. is the, well, how we have it. And this is how you have to take it. Take yeah. it or leave it. Yeah. You know, and, and it, 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 we have to rethink 
what service means. And that means that we have to spend time as leadership in our organizations, thinking about the experience that we want our customers to have, mm -hmm. thinking about and talking through these scenarios of, of what if a customer wants this or that and paying attention to what customers are asking for. Because if, if you're seeing that that is now a trend where people are perhaps more health conscious or maybe people are more vegetarian than not, then we need to add some options because we want to have them come back. It's almost as if we have this attitude like we don't care. And you know what? We create that problem in the Bahamas because we continue to accept poor service. Right. We continue to accept bad attitudes instead of us saying, you know what? I'm not going back to this place until you get it right. Yeah. I would... what we, do? we keep going back. So these people are still making money. Absolutely. So they think they, you are just a voice making noise in the wind because you're not affecting my business. Wow. I was going to ask you, I didn't want to put you on the spot, but that lady who was saying to you, you come in here swinging your hands. Did you ever like report her? Did you... <laughs> I, mean, and I didn't. Mm, right. <laughs> you know, I just laughed it off, mm -hmm. you know, and just continued making my request, yeah. you know. But you're right. We need to do more of that. Mm -hmm. We need to report. We need to let people know this is what's going on so that it can be addressed. And so we have to get out of that mindset as well uh, locally where we just feel like, you know, well, I don't want to. I hear this all the time. I don't want to take bread out of anybody's mouth. Mm. You know, I don't want to cause no problems. I don't want nobody come looking for me. I don't want my name and no mix up. These are all the things that we say. And so we end up just creating this cycle and living this cycle. Yeah. Yeah. I know you have to go and Laverne has to leave us as well. Um, I'm just going to read some of these messages really quickly. Uh, this person says here, if civil servants want tips, that's called a bribe and it's illegal. That employee should be reported to the police. Hmm. All right. I've been in the hospitality business all my life, and I know how it goes with tips. So wherever I go, I get any service, I get any kind of service. I leave a tip except with government officials. Okay. Another person says here, Bahamian service is truly the worst. Other countries pull out the uh, put out the red carpet. Bahamians act as if they they are doing us a favor or doing you a favor. Um, this is, these are facts. Worst in the Caribbean. That's a text there. Another one here. I tip on the service rendered. Also being in the service industry, the base pay is trash. So I tip because I know what it's like. Don't get me wrong. The service still has to be good. But once the service is good, the least I tip is $15. Okay. Another one here. In the hotel, there are two types of tippers. The guest who tips before service. That's to ensure prompt service. And the guest who tips after seeing how the service went. Okay, mm -hmm. and um, this one says here, guests are not allowed to tip at a certain hotel they're calling. I have seen workers get fired for accepting a tip. Wow. And this one says here, strange enough, as civil servants, people always want to tip me um, after our encounter, but many people don't realize that entire office thrives on giving exceptional service to customers. I assume this is an unusual experience for them. Mm, interesting. And a couple more. As an entrepreneur, I don't necessarily want a monetary tip. But go big, big me up on Yelp or TripAdvisor and recommend me to your friends. Okay, that's, that's, that's pretty interesting. I suspect many others don't share their ear of you. But if you, if you own the business, I can see why you might say that. Um, this one says, if people get tired of customers too, why do you do it on your show? You tell people don't call back or find another show. It's kind of different though. I mean, because it's a little bit different. It's a little bit different. No, it's different um, because these people are intentionally trying to drive me crazy. You know, they call here just to frustrate me. It's not to say that you don't go into a shop. Well, maybe some of you do go into a shop just to work on the nerves of the, the people in the store. Yeah. Well, you need help. You need help. Um, another one. In the past, I have caved into the pressure of tipping many times when the service didn't warrant it. I normally tip an additional 10% over and above the mandatory 15% gratuity expected. I tip food store packing staff between 3 and $5, wow, usually based on service and age. I tip store clerks between 5 and $10, depending on service given. Okay. All right. Um, uh, hopefully, we'll have more to say on this in the future. But Simone, both thank you so, so much for being with us this morning. Really, really, really appreciate it. Always. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here again. <laughs> All right. And uh, to Laverne, thank you so much. I'll talk with you again next week. We're going to take a break for news and be back with more. Hey, uh, World Family Doctor Day is coming up tomorrow. We're going to be talking about family medicine and more in our next hour. This is Morning Blend on Guardian Radio 96.9. When you ain't got no money 
This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. This is Guardian Radio, your station for up-to-the-minute news, intelligent, interactive, and engaging conversation. 96.9 FM. The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. Wake up, it's a new day. Wake up, it's a new day. Good morning and welcome to Morning Blend Business on this Thursday, May 18th, 2023. Welcome back to our Morning Blend listeners. Once again, I'm Dwight Strawn. This morning, family medicine and especially in light of World Family Doctor Day, which is tomorrow, May 19th. Joining us to talk about this, very pleased to welcome Dr. Keisha Patterson-Pratt and Dr. Marilyn Wallace-Bain. Great to have you with us. Good morning. Good morning, and good morning, Bahamas. Happy to be here this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Bahamas. We're happy to be here, and thank you so much for having us here to discuss World Family Doctor Day. It's our pleasure. It's our pleasure. Let's talk about that. Um, How long has this been around, World Family Doctor Day? Okay, so let's let's get it started. So, World Family Doctor Day. It has been around since 2010 which was first declared by an organization called WONCA, which stands for World Organization of Family Doctors. And it is celebrated May 19th. Woohoo! Tomorrow's the big day. And so what is it? It's a day to highlight the role and contribution of family doctors and primary care teams and healthcare systems around the world. Mm -hmm. So it's not just local. It's not just in the Bahamas. This is worldwide. Okay, so we are part of a movement tomorrow. So this celebration acknowledges the central role of family doctors in the delivery of personal, comprehensive and continuing health care for all patients. And it allows for the, it allows for the celebration of the progress being made in family medicine and the special contributions of primary care teams globally. Great. Let's get into that. Family medicine and primary care physicians, um, why that's important. And, 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 and let's do some definitions, uh, define how, what that is exactly and how that's different from showing up at a, at a clinic and seeing who, whichever doctor's on call or on, on duty at that hour. Um, Let's talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about primary care. First of all, right, what is primary care? So primary care is the first contact of patients with the healthcare system. And it involves the development of a relationship between the patient and physician. It is a partnership. So it's not just a Um, Okay, you come to the doctor and the doctor says, okay, you have to do this. No, we want patients intricately involved in their health care because evidence has shown that the more involved patients are in a partnership with taking control of their health along with the physicians, the better health outcomes there are. And this is particularly in patients with um, chronic diseases such as diabetes and high blood pressure. Yeah. And okay. Do we, right. Do we have any idea we'll have a family care physician, we'll have a primary care physician? Um, is that a trend that we're seeing an uptick in or are we seeing actually uh, moving in the opposite direction? 
No, definitely, definitely. There's a, that's a trend where we're seeing an uptake. Really, every single person in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas should have a primary care physician, should have a family physician. Mm-hmm. Why is that? Why is that important? And, and, um, and yeah, give us some, because I can think of some people who are saying, well, I don't know if I want to go to the same doctor everybody in the family is going to because I need some privacy. And they, but, but let's talk about that. Well, why is that so important? So it is. It, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so that's a very important question. Why is it important to have a family physician? A family physician is that person who gets to know you very well. They get to know all aspects of you because that's really who a family physician is. A family physician is going to take care of you from birth until your death. The doctors who are with you for every aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. Another way that we like to say it is that we are your doctors from the first breath until your last, Mm -hmm. from the womb until the tomb. We are that doctor for you. An important thing that Dr. Patterson mentioned is that relationship, that bond that you form with your family physician. With that bond and with every physician, confidentiality is prime. It is key. So you should never have a fear as to if I go to my family physician and my mother goes to the, my family, the same family physician, oh, she's going to tell my information and that I haven't been good and that I have some bad habits and traits. You should have no fear regarding that because when you sit in my chair, what is said there stays there. Mm. You should have no need to worry about that. All right. Now, that's really interesting. You said from birth to death. But, um, the, you know, some people believe, well, I need to, when I'm young, I need to see a pediatrician. And when I get older, if you're a woman, you need to go to an OBGYN specifically. And when you get older, a doctor who deals with aging and all that stuff. Um, are you saying that is, what, what, are you, what are you suggesting there? So the beauty about family medicine is that family physicians are specially trained in a wide area of subspecialties. We are trained in medicine. We are trained in surgery, pediatrics, obstetrics, and gynecology. Our training also extends into some of the subspecialties within medicine and surgery. And so we are what you would consider the jack of all trade doctor. Mm -hmm. And you know the saying goes, jack of all trade, master of none. No, 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 no. When it comes to your family physician, We are a jack of all trade and a master of many. Mm. Our primary thing is preventative medicine, but we're a jack of all trade and uh, and we have, we can do many, many things. So we're a master of many things. Mm -hmm. So as it relates to what you're referring about, do I not need a pediatrician? Do I not need a, a surgeon? No, we're not saying that. Primary care physician serves as your first point of contact in the medical field. So would that gatekeepers, you come to us, we assess you, we diagnose you, we treat you, and should you require any further assistance in the management of your care, then we refer you out to the other subspecialists, such as your surgeon, such as your gastroenterologist, or a pediatrician, or wherever we need to refer you, we mm-hmm. can refer you. Okay. Our skills are many. Mm-hmm. Our knowledge is deep. Okay. All right. That sounds good. That sounds good. I bet you you don't do dentistry, though, right? Or, no, no, we don't do <laughs> okay. dentistry. Right. But if you come with a dental problem, we will assess you ah. and refer one. Okay. All right. So let's talk more about that. Preventative medicine. We're, he- we're hearing so much more about that these days. Um, and the family uh, physician's role in preventative medicine. Yeah. So we are that doctor who you will come to and we provide you with your, what you like to call your general checkups, your, your annuals, We do health assessments, we do health appraisals on you. And through that information gained through those visits, 
We help to maintain your health. If we see a whole lot, wait a minute, we need to address this. We need to focus in on what it is that you are doing that is not exactly helpful for you that can lead to a problem. And one of those things that we find a whole lot, as you know, in the Bahamas, we unfortunately have a very high rate of obesity, which a lot of times we sit and think, I'm not obese, I'm just pleasantly plump, or I am just big boned or solid. This mm. runs in my family. Mm -hmm. So it is our job that when you sit in front of us with that type of an attitude that we show you, hey, there are several consequences of your actions. There are several consequences if you do not take uh, steps right now to reverse this. And so that's a part of us helping to prevent your health, uh, prevent you from ending up with serious health complications. Mm -hmm. Also, certain things such as safety, things people things don't normally think about. We are that physician who takes the time. We take the time. I cannot stress that enough. We are the doctors who sit down and we listen. We take the time with you. It's not an in and out thing. And by us getting to know you, we're better able to help you plan out your course of health to prevent illness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we're getting some interesting questions. And um, all right, so this person's asked as well. So is the term family physician just another way of saying general practitioner? Are you the same? Hi, good morning. Thank you for that question. I will be gladly glad to answer that. No, we are not the same as a general practitioner. And that question we tend to get pretty often. So I have no problem clearing that up. A family physician are trained specialists, highly trained to treat all diseases whereas general practitioners are not specialist trained. We go through tr uh, a rigorous training for four years, rotating through all the different specialty areas, gaining lots of experience that is different from a general practitioner who have not been trained as a specialist. All right, so how would we know? Um, uh, can anyone just say that they are a family uh, a doctor, family and medical physician, or is there a special thing we need to look out for to know for a fact that this is, this is not just a GP, this is a uh, medicine doctor? Well, we family medicine physicians take pride in our name, family medicine physicians, because we have worked hard and we consider ourselves specialists. So yes, when you go to a doctor's office, if you want to ask them, they will be able to gladly tell you, are they a general practitioner or a family medicine specialist? And they even might have documents to show that they have gotten their degree, their doctorate of medicine in family medicine which takes four years. Mm -hmm. So much different than a general practitioner. We're highly trained specialists. Uh, so you definitely would want to ask about that to, to make sure. Most definitely. All right. All right. So this is another one of those questions. If my gynecologist is doing my annual physicals, do I really need another doctor? Anybody want to jump in on that one? Sorry, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't hear the first part. If my gynecologist is doing my annual physicals, do I really need uh, another doctor? Do I really need a family medical physician? Absolutely. Why? Because gynecologists are highly trained as well, specialists in their area. But when it comes to family physicians, we are highly trained as well in everything, in diagnosing and treating illnesses and also providing preventative care. We can do routine, routine checkups. We can do health risk screening tests, it, the mental health checks. The list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. So to answer that question, if you have a gynecologist, where you're going for your annual? Yes, that is okay. But you generally need to have a family doctor as well who will cater to every aspect of your health care. Mm -hmm. So we tend to look at 
the patient in a holistic, have a holistic approach. And that's what family doctors do. So yeah. we pride ourselves on that. We don't con just consider one aspect of a patient's health care, but we consider everything. Their emotional, their social, their psychological well-being. We look at the patient as a whole and we don't just treat one part of the body. So yes, you definitely need a primary care phys family medicine physici uh, physician as your main doctor. Mm -hmm. And you all have an association here in the Bahamas right now. How many members do you have? Hi, okay, so you are referring to the Bahamas Association of Primary Care Physicians. That is an organization that pretty much have mostly family, but it is open to other individuals who also practice primary care. So currently we have about 50 plus members inside of the organization. And we are always excited for opportunities where we can share information with the general public that helps with promoting health and wellness. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Sounds great. All right. So I want to get back to some of the things you were talking about earlier about the challenges that you're seeing with health, health in the country, obesity, and we know the non-communicable diseases like diabetes and hypertension, big problems here. How, how are we doing well, from what you're seeing? Um, as family med medicine practitioners, what's, what's the state, the general state of health of the, the average Bahamian at this point? Unfortunately, we have a very sick population and it truly saddens my heart because we can do better. And we as family physicians are here to help you do better. One of our key things is to educate the population. You mentioned certain chronic non-communicable diseases like hypertension. And if we start there, a lot of our population believes that if I don't feel anything, then I'm okay. Mm -hmm. And that is a very dangerous, super dangerous attitude to take. Because hypertension is known as the silent killer. And it's known as the silent killer for a reason. You do not feel what is happening to your body when the damage is being done. Wow. You show up being blind. You show up with heart problems. You show up with kidney problems. And you're like, oh, but I was feeling good. I was never sick. Mm. I didn't have to go to the doctor ever. And we're here to tell you, we are here to tell you, Bahamas, no, you need to see us at least once a year. You need to come in and see us because this is a part of preventative medicine. When you do not take that time to come in, you present in a state which is, unfortunately, in many cases, far too, got, is too advanced. Yeah. Yeah. And we do not want that for you. But I am happy to say for those individuals who have a family physician, who have established that relationship with a family physician, they're the ones who tend to be more compliant because they have that one individual who they are responsible to, in a sense, and they feel more in appointments. They want to hear that, hey, I'm doing good. I am doing well. If something is wrong, we flag it and say, no, 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 and we correct it. So I have found that those individuals who have a family physician, they tend to be a little bit more compliant with their medication, their healthy lifestyle, and they seemingly have an overall better general health. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what do you think uh, is contributing to or to these issues? Is it the, the diet, the lack of uh, exercise? Or those are the things we hear about commonly? Or are we looking at even deeper issues, genetic factors here? Well, it's all of the above. Let's wow. start with the diet. The typical Bahamian diet is a walking heart attack. Oh, my goodness. We are, <laughs> mm. we are eating too much Food. First of all, you have to have your peas and rice, your macaroni, your potato salad, your coleslaw, 
And then how many different meats? Mm. Usually, usually fried. Mm-hmm. So we need to start. We need. I think the conversation needs to start from there. Uh, the diet. What are we eating? There needs to be drastic changes because the typical Bahamian diet, which Bahamians love and they enjoy, and they eat this maybe twice a day. Wow, it's not good. And the fruits and the vegetables, which patients, which persons should be having more. Mm-hmm. So I would really like to see the country move towards a, a trend of having more staple foods like your vegetables and your fruits included in every meal. Mm-hmm. And then we talk about the lack of physical activity. That is a huge problem as well. We are not as, as, as a, as a country, we are not being active. Whether it's, you know, persons, you know, are busy with their work schedule or not having access to different resources. But at the same time, in each neighborhood, there is a park. It's just about finding that time and actually carving out that time and being intentional with it. Mm-hmm. Because when it comes to your health, That is something that you have to be intentional with. You have to intentionally say, I'm going to walk or start exercising at this time on these days. You have to make it into a routine because if it is not a routine, then it's not going to happen. So I would like to encourage all of the Bahamians out there, please, please increase your physical activity. You don't have to be jogging or running or going to going to the gym. Mm-hmm. It's just simple walking and being intentional with it. You know, we say that persons should be doing at least 150 minutes of exercise. And not just when I say walking, not just the walking that you when you walk to your car, you know, when you walk in the store. We need a little bit more vigorous walking to get your heartbeat moving. Mm-hmm. So back to the 150 minutes a that, week. A week. I was going to say, if that's a day, oh boy. No, 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 okay. no. I'm going to be very clear with this. <laughs> 150 minutes a week. Okay. That's, that's doable. Um, it is. Mm-hmm. It's, do, it's doable. If you want to, do, you can divide it up however you want. For persons that want to do the whole 150 one, in one day, kudos. But if you want to divide it up in half an hour, 30 minutes, you know, that's all it takes, a minimum. Mm -hmm. So if we could see the public getting, and that's why I like to see the road to 50, the, you know, the different walkathons. I I, I love to see that because we really need to get persons more active. Yeah. What about, um, uh, people always bring this up though, about drinking and smoking. We we don't have the biggest smoking population, but we have uh, a good number of people. Um, what about that? What impact is that having? Um, especially the drinking on on our our health and our people here. So the the drinking, okay. So let's start with the drinking. We fine. Well, I'm not even sure if we can actually define because it's it's subjective in terms when persons say, "Oh, doc, I only drink one glass or of of rum or one cup or mm-hmm. two cups." Mm-hmm. We have to really be. Uh, realistic with ourselves. And, and, and get them to tell you the size of the cup, right? Because Right, hmm. exactly. Yeah. And what you're mixing it with. Right. Are you mixing it with, any, with anything, right? But alcohol... Okay, so I want to be very careful how I say this because I know us as, you know, a country, we, we like our alcohol, mm-hmm. you know? We like, we like to drink um, in moderation, right? Mm-hmm. That, is, that is the key. We can't be, it's one glass of wine a day or um, every other day, like a half cup of rum. But persons take it to the extreme. But overall, alcohol does have effects on your medical care as as well as your mental health. Mm -hmm. That is something that is often not talked about. The mental health part of it and being family physicians, we cater to all of that. You know, that's part of your, your prefer annual checkup. We ask you these questions so that we can get an idea of, you know, maybe we want to consider you having too much to drink or we want to consider cutting back. 
um, because alcohol has been shown to have different effects. You know, it can lead to um, different cancers. It can also affect your heart and your liver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Um, we're getting some interesting questions on our text line. You can continue to text in, folks. We're talking with Dr. Marilyn Wallace Bain and Dr. Keisha Patterson Pratt. And as we told you, World Family Doctor Day is coming up tomorrow. Text us 422-4796 or tweet us at Morning Blend 969 or call in 323-6232. Three two five four three one six three two five four two five nine, or call us toll free two four two three hundred five seven two zero. This texter is asking if uh, family uh, medical doctors are you on, uh, including the NHI system. Are you part of that? There are. Uh <laughs> there are a few family medicine physicians who are a part of the NHI system. So like Dr. Patterson would have said before, when you are choosing your doctor, don't be afraid to ask them if they are a family medicine trained physician. Mm -hmm. It is to know who you are seeing and you have the right to choose who you want. So when you're looking for your NHI doctor, you can ask if the doctor who you have selected is a family medicine physician. Mm -hmm. So you can find family medicine physician on NHI. Okay. We're everywhere. Okay. That is good. That's good to know. Uh, this uh, texter says, congratulations to my fellow family physicians on celebrating uh, Fa World Family Doctor Day. Great job this morning from Dr. Karis Thompson, major in Freeport, Grand Bahama. Okay. There you go. Um, uh, this texter says, I think people would be more active and healthy if these gyms would stop with these ridiculous rates. Okay, it was a whole other show. Anyway, um, they have equipment and nutritional options that would benefit so many, but a no majority can pay over 100 a month. Well, I'm sure you can find some gyms under 100 a month. You definitely can. Um, whatever happened to, bo to body positivity? My aunt said she is big at 5'4 and 300 pounds, but healthy. Can't you be big and healthy? Okay. Um, ladies, you want to take that one on? Anybody? Oh, okay. Can you be big as in overweight? Well, you know, this is a tough, That's tough one there. The big and sexy argument there. Can you be uh, right, 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 big, sexy, and, and healthy? Yeah, and like Dr. Wallace Swain had said earlier, the Bahamians, it's you know, you're plump, you're solid. Mm -hmm. You know, like they say, men like to say, um, what what's the saying? Bone meat is for man, bone for dog. Is that something <laughs> I, I remember here? That, that sounds like right? it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, you know, we have this, um, I would say, misguided approach about it, but it's pretty clear in terms of your acceptable weight and your normal weight. We use a calculation called a body mass index, mm -hmm. your BMI, and um, you have certain numbers and certain criteria that put you in certain categories. And the evidence is there to show that when person the persons that are in the overweight more 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 specifically in the obese category, they are at increased risk of many many conditions, mm -hmm. many chronic non-communicable diseases, high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, and these further can lead to stroke. So, I think that the big and health, I mean, it, it may only be a certain time before you may be what you call healthy while still being big, but it's only a matter of time until those health conditions catch you up because the evidence is pretty clear that persons that are in the overweight and obese category are affected with more chronic diseases, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, very delicate, <laughs> delicately handled. Another way, to put it another way, oh, just uh. to, to add to that, to put it another way, if you are not sure 
if you have a healthy body weight, if you feel healthy, but you are a little bit more on the bohemian solid side, easy fix, easy solution. Go and see your family doctor. Have your health assessment. Let us do all of the checks. And then we will sit and have that conversation with you as to what is a healthy weight for you and just where your health status is at this point in time. Okay. All right. Boy, uh, that, that, that will be very interesting consultations for a lot of people. But um, uh, let's take this call. Good morning. You're on the air. Yeah, good morning, Mr. Swan. Good morning to your guest. Hi. Good morning. Yeah, Mr. Uh, to your guest. I'm guilty. So I, I just wanted to get this in. You know, I, I, I for the, uh, the NIH or the NHI, whatever, you know, the, the health thing with the doctors, I, I uh, intuitively just pick family, um, family uh, medicine, right? The doctors, right? Because uh, I, I thought it would have been a great idea for the whole family to go so they'll be able to, you know, for the younger ones to, 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 to explain to them the dispositions or just in general see if there's any common, uh, like, problems within the family itself. You know, it might be something that's predominant within the family. Is that a good idea? Hello? Yeah. Doc- I was asking uh-huh. if that's a good idea because I'm saying it's with a family physician. And the whole family signed up for the same doctor. Is that a good idea? Because I was saying they could actually uh, be able to detect predis- predispositions in, in, of diseases in the family yeah. versus just going to the doctor in silo. Right, that's what they were saying. Trying to be able to generalize a condition that probably runs in the family. I was just saying that's a good idea. I believe it is. Let's get them to yep. answer that. Thank you very much. Um, you heard the question there. That is what you're basically saying that people should be doing, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And if you let, if I give you a particular example, if a patient comes in to us, we do a thorough history. We do a very comprehensive history to get all of the information that we will need to be able to make a proper assessment of your health. One of the aspects of the history is the family history, and we get into that with you. And if you come and you say to me, well, doc, you know, uh, family history of breast cancer. And that perks my air up. Okay, tell me more about this. Who has breast cancer in your family? Oh, first degree relatives. My mom has breast cancer. Okay, I have several aunts, so on and so forth. You are now telling me that, hey, I need to impress upon you that not only should we ensure that we are on point with our screenings for you, but I need you now to get your other family members involved. Mm -hmm. They now need to be on heightened alert that, hey, this isn't the time to be skipping and playing and ducking out on all of your screenings. You now need to get screened as well. So with that information, it helps us to help you better for you to also help your family better. And we'll be glad to take your entire family. Mm -hmm. So if we can keep your entire family healthy, well, and on the right course. Let me just ask you, if, if you do that, do you get some special rates? You've got the whole family coming. Does it work like that? Um, uh, what can you tell us in that regard? Well, I guess that would be specific to the individual family physician. Mm-hmm. That, that may be a case when your entire family comes. You know, ultimately... As a family physician, when you come to us, you become a part of our family. So, yeah, there just might be a special discount for you. Mm, Okay. All right. Excellent. So, again, World Family Doctor Day is tomorrow. Anything special happening here as a result of that? Oh, absolutely. So, I am crazy, super excited about World Family Doctor Day You know, typically as doctors, we usually don't take time for ourselves. We don't celebrate ourselves. And oftentimes we are the forgotten ones. And that's okay because what we do is really from the heart. It's our passion. So we typically don't pay too much mind to it. But since they decided to give us a day, 
we gladly take it. And we decided this year to not just take a day. We decided to take an entire week. Wow. We decided to do a whole week of celebrations. So we are doing promotion, uh, family physician, the family doctor, which we're doing here with you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. We have also had the opportunity to do it with Aaron Green yesterday. We had the opportunity to do it to Dr. Denotra Archer Cartwright, who is a proud family physician. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, we wrecked ourselves. We blasted ourselves on social media, WhatsApp, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, highlighting who we are as family physician, you would have seen pictures and videos. So you get an idea of, hey, yeah, that's a family physician. Today, I'm super, super, super excited about today because today, today, all roads are going to lead to Greater Commission Ministry on Wolf Road. Yes, on Wolf Road, 12 to 2 p.m., we are going to be there doing health screenings on the individual who utilize that ministry. Oh, wow. We are taking family medicine out of the four walls of a clinic, and we are going into the community to meet you where you are. Beautiful. Free screenings, free, free, free health screenings from certified professional family medicine physician. Oh, and wow. tomorrow is the big day. And it's going to be epic, absolutely epic. We will be having an awards and appreciation celebration for those doctors who normally don't get it appreciated or so we feel. But this year, we will be appreciating you. We're celebrating all of our family physicians in the Department of Family Medicine, PHA, PHA Corporate. It's going to be epic. Absolutely epic. Oh, then on Saturday, More. we'll be having a family fun day just to have some friendly competition and fun. Looking forward to it. And of course, on Saturday, we wrap it all up. Thanks and praises to the God Almighty for giving us the strength to do what we do every day. That is our World Family Doctor Day events. Wow, that is a lot. That is great stuff. And the free screenings, again, you said that's today at Great Great Commission, uh, Great Commin Commission Ministries. Um, that sounds 12 wonderful. 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Okay. And um, this is fantastic. Thank you so much for being here this morning and giving us this great information. Happy World Family Doctor Day to both of you, Dr. Keisha Patterson Pratt and Dr. Marilyn Wallace Bain, and to all the family physicians out there. Um, keep up what you're doing. We appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And thank you for having us. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Bahamas, get yourself a family physician. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Okay. Thank you again. We're going to take a break. This is Morning Blend Business on Guardian Radio 96.9. After a hurricane or storm, get the Nassau Guardian's Hurricane Guide. The guide will tell you where to purchase building and cleaning supplies, waste disposal, medical care, which auto shop to go to after driving through flooded streets, and much more. The Nassau Guardian's Hurricane Guide will help to make sure everyone knows what to do in the event a hurricane approaches and after it departs. Take advantage of this double insertion opportunity plus 15 radio commercials. Contact us today, 302-2300, 302-2300, or call your account executive. Will you be prepared? Earning zero interest on your savings at the bank? With as little as $100, you can start earning interest on your money while you're sleeping, eating, or standing in line at the bank with the Seafeld Savings Express Plan. Ready to invest? Start by putting $1,000 into our mutual funds and earn interest there too. Because at CFAL, your interest is our interest. Visit CFAL.com to start now. CFAL, growing wealth for future generations of Bahamians. Well, who else? 
tell the truth. I thought a beige ball was dying on the sidewalk. I'm preparing for my 4 by 100 meter debut. More like 1x1, one one, cause the other 99 killing you. Funny, the Bahamas games come in July 7th to July 15th and Grand Bahama gotta win this. Well, you know that. Email info at thebahamasgames.org or call 322-1029 for more information. Which island is gonna win? At Doctors Hospital, our lamp just got brighter. The Loyalty Advantage Membership Program now has three unique plans to choose from. From LAMP prepaid with free prime care visits and service line discounts, LAMP insured with copay waivers and zero upfront collections at the ER and inpatient services, or our new LAMP access, a free plan that offers 10% off labs, pharmacy, and imaging. LAMP has a plan for everyone. To sign up, visit our website or give us a call. Doctors Hospital, trusted and best care now. My business couldn't survive without my credit card machine from Fidelity. It's fast, convenient, and my clients love it. My sales increase, and I can track my earnings. Get your credit card machine from Fidelity today. Call 356-7764. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. It is time for your morning business report brought to you by CFAL. Part of Mr. Philip Davis touting the investment potential between Ghana and the Bahamas, speaking at a summit. Prime Minister saying both countries must strengthen ties to tap into new avenues for investment, including tourism, technology, agriculture, and energy. A high-level delegation from Ghana in the Bahamas this week is part of the Ghana Diaspora Connect Roadshow for the Caribbean. Prime Minister Davis delivering a keynote, keynote remarks at the Ghana Bahamas Summit, saying the investment potential of Ghana and the Bahamas is staggering, potentially staggering, and that the governments must stand ready to facilitate and support investors inspired by the success of the Afri-Exim Bank partnership. He said, quote, I am a man of faith, and because I am a man of faith, optimism comes easy to me. Today, however, I find myself especially optimistic. Prime Minister saying the future is bright for the Bahamas and Ghana and that the relations are deepening and with the strengthening of such ties, quote, we draw ever closer to our goals of shared growth and are already working on several initiatives alongside institutions like Afriaxim Bank to bring this vision to life. You can read more about his comments in today's Guardian Business section. Small firms outpace larger firms when it comes to the use of credit card systems and mobile payment platforms as going to an Inter-American Development Bank study that says that substandard infrastructure may also play a part in the slow uptake of progressive payment forms. The study, titled Reflections on Innovation and Productivity as Caribbean Businesses Emerge from the Pandemic, a study outlines issues local businesses currently face in the wake of both the COVID pandemic and Hurricane Dorian. According to the IDV study, while mobile phones offer opportunities for business continuity in the family islands, the up take of such platforms has been slow. As of 2020, credit card and mobile payment uptake was slow in the Bahamas for both small and large firms across the Caribbean. It says the use of mobile money payments is almost non-existent. But it says on the other hand, unlike its peers across the region, large Bahamian firms were more likely than their smaller counterparts to refuse credit card payments, both in person and remotely. It said even before the rollout of the sand dollar in 2022, the level of resistance to payment methods outside of cash was high and may partly explain the slow uptake of sand dollars by citizens and firms. The Central Bank of the Bahamas revealing that 100% of financial firms engaged in a shadow shopping exercise were compliant with anti-money laundering. First, the Central Bank engaged a specialist firm, which is comprised of some of the world's leading AML researchers. That firm was engaged to conduct shadow shopping activities with 50 Bahamian internationally active public banks and trust companies. Only 16 institutions, representing 75% of the industry, responded to the email solicitations. In its final report on the interaction with Bahamian financial institutions, that shadow 
shopping firm said that it found no non-compliance and that Bahamian banks and trusts are not particularly receptive to unsolicited approaches from clients unknown to them. Only 33 of 238 of the solicitations, about 14%, generated a response from the targeted institutions, and only 16 of 50 institutions responded to any of the inquiries. Read more about that in today's Guardian business section. And NASA Airport Development Company, NAD, releasing its 2022 annual report, which reveals that the company reached 75% of its pre-pandemic revenue last year and reported $4 million in revenue from concessions between February and April 2022, when the airport recorded passenger numbers close to 2019 levels. NAD Chairman Gary Sawyer said in the report that it reached $36.5 million when compared to the $37.6 million forecasted and $48.9 million attained in the tourism banner year of 2019. Income generated from non-aeronautical activities year-to-date came in at $7.7 million, up from 6% above what was forecasted, with December numbers up 23% over the forecast. Overseas A dozen poor countries are facing economic instability and even collapse under the weight of hundreds of billions of dollars in foreign loans, much of them from the world's biggest and most unforgiving government lender, China. That's according to an Associated Press analysis of a dozen countries most indebted to China, including Pakistan, Kenya, Zambia, Laos, and Mongolia. A study finding payback that debt is consuming an even greater amount of the tax revenue needed to keep schools open, provide electricity, and pay for food and fuel. And it's draining foreign currency reserves these countries use to pay interest on those loans, leaving some with just months before they that money is gone. Behind the scenes is China's reluctance to forgive debt and its extreme secrecy about how much money it has loaned and on what terms, which has kept other major lenders from stepping in to help. On top of that, in the recent discovery, uh, is that borrowers have been required to put cash in hidden escrow accounts that push China to the front of the line of creditors to be paid. Countries in the Associated Press analysis had as much as four, and most were devoting more than a third of government revenue to paying off debt. Two of them, Zambia and Sri Lanka, have already gone into default, unable to make even interest payments on loans financing the construction of ports, mines, and power plants. In your market watch, recapping trading on the BISIX from Wednesday, your market movers, Cable Bahamas moving 1,500 shares, down 25 cents to 425. Commonwealth Bank moving 3,000, unchanged to 358. CIBC First Caribbean Bank moving 500, closing at 1150, unchanged. Focal moving 1,000, unchanged at 415. Consolidated Water up 46 cents, closing at 396. Emir Incorporated down 11 cents, closing at 1054. The BISIX All Share Index closing at 2,442.99, down 4.69. That's your Market Watch, and that is your morning business report brought to you by CFAL, growing wealth for future generations. That is going to do it for Morning Blend Business on uh, this Thursday. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more.